Today's topic, we're gonna go over the power of submission. Okay, the power of submission. That's today's topic. That's today's topic. All right. Um, before we get there, could you give me Isaiah fifty-two verse one? Isaiah fifty-two verse one. Let's start there. Isaiah fifty-two verse one. The book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 1. Come on. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. What is that? Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. It says, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. You brothers and sisters, you're looking glorious as ever. I see the sisters looking bad as hell. Open it to the most high. Okay? Read that again. Verse 1. The book of Isaiah, Two, verse one. Read. Awake, awake. Awake, awake. Wake up, you Israelites. Awake, awake. Read. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy strength, O Jerusalem, O Zion. Read. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. That's what we are seeing this day. We see the brothers in order. We see the sisters in order. All praise to the Most High God for that thing. Read. The holy city. The what? The holy city. We are that holy city. The Most High God is getting us out of the depth of hell, is raising us up as his sons and daughters this day, so we can look glorious before the nations, before the second coming of the Messiah. Read that part again. The holy city. The holy city. We are that holy city. Give me that in um, Amos. Give me Zechariah. I believe it's Zechariah. I'm shooting from the hip, so bear with me. Okay. Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 1. Read that. The book of Zechariah chapter 8 verse 1. Come on. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying. Read. Thus said the Lord of hosts. Come on. I was jealous for Zion. He says, what did he say? I was jealous for Zion. The Lord is jealous for Zion. So when we go off, we break the laws of God. The most high God is jealous about that thing because we are made it unto him. So when we go into other demonic um, philosophies, that's spiritual fornication. So the Lord don't want that thing. Okay? Read the part again. Isaiah chapter, Zechariah chapter 8 verse 2. Read. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Come on. I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy. You see that thing? I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy. That's why when we went off as a people, the most High God, he judged us. He didn't play with us. Look at us, we are at the bottom of all nations. No nations desire us. Why? Because we went off, we broke God's commandments. You understand? Read. I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy. Come on. And I was jealous for her with great fury. The great fury is when we went into slavery. That is the most High God's great fury. We went into captivity. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. I am returned unto Zion, Read. and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. The Lord will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. We are Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Second Ezra 10.44, read that. Second Ezra chapter 10 verse 44. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Read. Second Ezra chapter 10 verse 44. Come on. This woman whom thou sawest is Zion. This woman whom thou sawest is Zion. Read. And whereas she said unto thee, uh -huh. even, even she whom thou seest as a city building. You see that thing? This woman transformed into a city because Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Go back to where was that? Zechariah 8 verse 3. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 3. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. You will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the people before it's a place. We are Jerusalem. Read. And will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. Shall be what? And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. A city of truth. We are Jerusalem. And we are called the city of truth. It doesn't look like it right now. Why? Because we're at the bottom. We're in the midst of sin, breaking God's commandments. You understand? Read. 
And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. Uh -huh. And the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. The mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. That's Mount Zion. The mountain of the Lord of hosts is Mount Zion. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 2. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1. Isaiah 2 verse 1. Isaiah said the same thing that Zechariah is saying. He's saying the same thing. Read that. Isaiah, Isaiah 2 verse 1. The book of Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1. Read. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Meaning all 12 tribes. Come on. And it shall come to pass in the last days. In the what? In the last days. We are in the last days right now, brothers and sisters. I need you brothers to understand that we are in the last days. So there's no, there's no room for error. We're in the last days. Make sure that you make sure your conversation is good. You understand? You deal with one another according to the script. No partiality. No fear, no favor for no man when it comes to this book. We're in the last days. No room for error. We want to catch the chariots when the Lord returns. Okay? Read that again. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. Come on. And it shall come to pass in the last days. In the last days. Read. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. Because Jerusalem is going to be the top government on earth. Jerusalem will be the top government on earth. You're going to see it from afar. Okay? Read. Shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Shall be exalted above the hills. The top government on earth. We are that Zion. We are that city. We are that holy city. Read. And all nations shall flow unto it. And all nations shall flow unto it. He's talking about Judah and Jerusalem, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Read. And many people shall go and say, uh -huh. Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Read. To the house of God, to the house of the God of Jacob. To the house of the God of Jacob, come on. And he will teach us of his ways. He will what? And he will teach us of his ways. The Lord will teach us of his ways. What are his ways? The commandments. He will teach us again. He will clarify things that don't make sense tonight. He will clarify things that don't make sense. Because right now you read the scriptures, there's some things that you see, and I don't understand this. The Lord will clarify things on that day. You understand? Read. And we will walk in his path. We will what? And we will walk in his path. We will walk in the path of righteousness. Come on. For out of Zion. For out of what? For out of Zion. For out of Zion, come on. Shall go forth the law. What are we gonna what, what are we gonna teach in the kingdom? For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. So when it says, go back to Zechariah 8, verse 3 again. Zechariah 8, verse 3. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 3. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. I returned unto Zion. Read. And thus will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Come on. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. Shall be what? And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. Jerusalem will be called the city of truth. What is the truth? The laws of God. God's commandments. So in the kingdom, we're going to teach the commandments. We're going to make sure all nations bow the knee when it comes to this Bible. They want to bow down to the king of Jacob, the, the Christ. Go back. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3 again. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Read. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Read. To the house of the God of Jacob. The house of the God of Jacob. Come on. And he will teach us his ways. Read. And we will walk in his path. Uh -huh. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. That's why it says we shall be called the city of truth. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Out of Zion shall go forth the commandments. That's how we're going to set the nations in order. That's how we're going to set the whole earth in order. They are going to be subject to this Bible. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. I'm getting into the topic, so just bear with me. Wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 1. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 1. Read. O God of our fathers. O God of my fathers. Come on, read it, right? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 1. Uh -huh. O God of my fathers and Lord of mercy, who has made all things with thy word. He has made all things with his word. He spoke it, it happened. The Lord built that thing. Read. And ordained man through thy wisdom. He ordained the, the righteous man through his wisdom. Starting with Adam. Come on. That he should have dominion 
over the creatures which thou hast made. He should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. Meaning what? The dominion over every bit of God's creation. That's what this is saying. Read. And order the world according to equity and righteousness. That's how, that's why Isaiah says, For out of Zion shall go forth the Lord. What is Solomon saying? Verse 3 again. With Solomon chapter 9, verse 3. Uh -huh. And order the world according to equity and righteousness. That's what we are going to do as the sons of God, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. They elect. The elect is going to order the world according to equity and what? Righteousness. Because right now, the world is not being ordered according to equity and righteousness. The world is running on evil. The, the world is running on mischief. Our job is to shut that down. Starting with you brothers, you sisters too. Okay? Read that again. Verse 3. With the Muslim chapter 9 verse 3. Read. And order the world according to equity and righteousness. Come on. And execute judgment with an upright heart. That's how we're going to order the world according to equity and righteousness. The nations are going to be taught the laws of God. They are going to observe the high holidays that the Lord has given us. No more Christmas. No more Valentine's Day. No more Mother's Day. No more none of that. We're going to teach the Bible. They're going to follow Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. You understand? There's not going to be saying, I want this. I feel none of it going to happen on this day. On that day, Go back to where was that? Isaiah 2, verse 3 again. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Come on. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Read. To the house of the God of Jacob. Come on. And he will teach us of his ways. He will teach us of his ways. Read. And we will walk in his path. We will walk in his path. That's what we're doing now. Rehearsing the righteous acts of the Most High God. Gathering together in the Spirit of Christ. Come on. For out of Zion, for out of Zion, out of the children of Israel, come on, shall go forth the Lord. Shall go forth the Lord. Read. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Come on. Let, look at what happens when the twelve tribes of Israel rule this earth. Because right now, what is going on in the earth right now? Give me that in Proverbs real quick. Um, give me Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter twenty. Mm. Give me Proverbs twenty nine. Proverbs 29 verse 2. Because right now the world is not being ordered according to equity and, ju and justice. That's not what's going on right now. The world is running on mischief like I mentioned. So our job is to turn this around. That's why we have this Bible. That's why the Lord is waking, up, waking us up this day. So you brothers and sisters, you better put yourself in this Bible. You better put yourself in this Bible. You brothers, imagine yourself in this Bible because the Bible is talking about you. You read about your forefathers, how they make decisions in the, during the time of the beginning. You see and you understand your uncles, your sisters, your aunts, okay, your mothers. Understand how they make decisions. Put yourself in this Bible so you can be able to see what's really going on in this book and apply that thing. Read that. Proverbs 29 verse 2. Proverbs 29 verse 2. Come on. When the righteous are in authority. When the righteous are in authority. Who's the righteous? Give me that in Luke 1 and 5. Luke 1 and 6. When the righteous are in authority. Okay. Here's an example of righteousness. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Come on. And they were both righteous before God. Come on. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. Please. Talk about Zechariah and Elizabeth. Our forefather and foremother. Okay. They were righteous before the Lord. Because they were keeping the commandments of the Most High. So now when us go back to Proverbs now. 29 verse 2. Read. Proverbs 29 verse 2. Come on. When the righteous are in authority. When the, the children of Israel are in authority. When the children of Israel are ruling all nations on earth. That's what he's saying. Read. The people rejoice. The people do what? The people rejoice. That is why you see the today. It doesn't matter which, which nation. All the nations. Guess what? That is why the nations are in subjection to Israel. Is because Israel's got military might. You understand? He rules them all. So the reason why they move the way that they move, because Israel's got his foot on their behind. That's why they don't do nothing. But guess what? They don't rejoice. You understand? They don't rejoice because the righteous are not in power. Read again. The book of Proverbs is to unite the two. Come on. When the righteous are in authority, uh -huh. the people rejoice. The people rejoice. Right now, nobody's rejoicing. 
Nobody is rejoicing right now. Everybody is mourning. You understand? Give me that in uh, uh, Jeremiah 14. I'm just dealing with Israel. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Read. Judah mourning. What did he say? Judah mourning. The Jews are mourning. Why? Because the wicked are in authority. The wicked are in authority. The righteous is not ruling this earth. We are not ruling right now. Yet. Read that again. Verse 2. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Come on. Judah mourning. Uh -huh. And the gates thereof language. The gates thereof language. That's what you see now. Come on. They are blind unto the ground. Read. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. You see that thing? The cry of Jerusalem has gone up. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 4.1. It says, The cry of Jerusalem has gone up. The Jews are mourning. The righteous are mourning because they are not in authority. That's why the world does not rejoice. You understand? Ecclesiastes 4 and 1. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. He considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. Who is oppressed? The 12 tribes of Islam. Come on. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed. What did he say? And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed. That's why it says, the cry of Jerusalem has gone up. Because of the tears of such as are oppressed. That's us this day. Read. And they had no comfort. We have no comfort as a nation. Come on. And on the side of the oppressors. On the side of the oppressors. There was power. There was power. They had power to rule everybody. Right now. Read. But they had no comfort. But we have no comfort. But now the Lord is comforting us. The Lord is comforting us by sending Elijah the prophet to wake us up in the last days. This is the comfort of the Lord this day. Okay? Go back to where he was at. Jeremiah 14, verse 2 again. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Read. Judah mourning, and the gates thereof language. Uh -huh. They are black unto the ground. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And the cry of Jerusalem has gone up. That's why it says, The tears of such as were oppressed. Go back to where he was at now. Proverbs 29, verse 2. Again. Proverbs 29 verse 2. Come on. When the righteous are in authority, Rain. the people will rejoice. Uh -huh. But when the wicked bear rule, but when the wicked bear rule, come on. The people mourn. The people do what? The people mourn. The people mourn. That's why now the 12 tribes of Israel were mourning. He says, Judah mourning. Why? Because we have no comfort. Because we rejected this Bible. Now we are in slavery. Now we are colonized. Now, the notions don't, dis don't respect us. Why? Because we rejected God's own, the laws in Christ. Now, the most High God has a mercy on us. You understand? To wake us up this day so we can come together and keep his laws before his second coming. Okay? Now, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 3. Wisdom of Solomon 9, chapter 9, verse 3. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 3. Come on. And order the world according to equity and, and righteousness. And order the world according to equity and righteousness, according to the law. Because when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Why? Because there will be what? There will be peace on earth. There's never going to be peace on this earth until the 12 tribes of Israel rule this earth. There's never going to be peace. Read that again. Was the Messiah chapter 9, verse 3. Come on. And order the world according to equity and righteousness. Read. And execute judgment with an upright heart. You see that thing? Go back to Isaiah 2, verse 3 again. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Come on. And many and many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. He will what? And he will teach us of his ways. Come on. And we will walk in his paths. Read. For out of Zion shall go forth the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Next verse. And he shall judge among the nations. He shall what? And he shall judge among the nations. The most high God will judge these nations. Read. And shall rebuke many people. Uh -huh. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares. Because right now the nations, they are causing havoc all over the earth. They are causing wars. They are bombing countries. You understand? He says he's going to turn their swords into plowshares. Meaning what? Farming instruments. Because what are they going to be? Slaves. Servants. 
You understand? Read. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. Uh -huh. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Pruning hooks. A pruning hook is a farming instrument. Come on. And, 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 and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nations. You see that thing? China will not be going to war with America. America will not be waging war on Syria, on Libya. They're not going to be doing that no more. Okay? Ray. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Neither shall they what? Neither shall they learn war anymore. Neither shall they learn war anymore. The nations are not going to go to war. You understand? After we rule. But before there's peace on this earth, there must be war. Understand that? For peace to be on this earth, there must be war. Okay? There's not going to be peace without war. Give me that to Muslim Solomon 18 verse 7. For there to be peace on this earth, there must be war first. The nations must be brought down that hate this Bible, that despise the children of Israel. Wisdom of Solomon 18 verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon 18 verse 7. Come on. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous. Their people, the nation of Israel, our people, we need to accept both. That what? The salvation of the what? The salvation of the righteous. The salvation of the righteous, come on. And destruction of the enemy. These are the two things that we need to, we need to accept as a people. That in order for us to rule, our na the nations must be destroyed. The nations must be brought down. The kingdoms must be brought down. So the nations must bow the knee to the king of Jacob. That is the only way there is going to be peace on this earth. There must be war. And the Lord is the one that is bringing war on this earth. You understand? Verse 7 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 7. Come on. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous uh -huh. and destruction of the enemies. Okay. Okay, read that again, verse 7. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 7. Read. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous uh -huh. and destruction of the enemy. And destruction of the enemy. That's what needs to happen. For peace to be on this earth, there must be war. That's what says they will learn war no more. Why? Because there must be peace. There must be war first, then peace. Okay? Isaiah 2, verse 4 again. The book of Isaiah 2 verse 4. Come on. And he shall judge among the nations uh -huh. and shall rebuke many people. Read. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Uh -huh. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Because the righteous will be in authority on that day. The righteous will be bearing rule. They're, that's why they're not going to learn war anymore. Because the nations... They like to wage war on other nations for what? Resources. Africa is one of those is one of those lands. I'm just using Africa as an example because that's where we at now. That's where we are scattered. That's where we were forced to migrate. Okay? It's other lands too. North America, China, South America, Central America, where people are scattered. Russia. Read that again. The last part. Neither shall they what? Neither shall they learn war anymore. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Come on, verse 5. O house of Jacob, uh -huh. come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. What is the light of the Lord? Give me that in Proverbs. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. That's a commandment right there. Okay? Proverbs 6 23. Proverbs 6 verse 23. Read. For the commandment is a lamp. For the commandment of the Most High God is a lamp. Read. And the law is light. And the law is light. The law is light. Go back to where was that? Isaiah 2 verse 5. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 5. Read. O house of Jacob, mm -hmm. come ye, and let us walk in the light of the law. Let us walk in the light of the law, the laws of God. That's how we must supposed to walk. We must be that light that shines before men. You understand? Now that you have the scriptures, now that you have the law, statutes, and commandments, our job is to be the light that shineth in the dark place. Understand that? You may understand that? Yes, sir. Oh, praises. Sisters, you get that? Oh, praises. Give me that in Matthew 5. 
Because this is what Christ said about their faith. Okay? We are commanded to walk in the light of the Lord. Matthew chapter 5, start at verse, start at verse 14. Matthew 5, 14. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Great. Ye are the light of the world. The 12 tribes of Israel, we are the light of the, of the world. Come on. A city. A what? A city. We are that holy city, Jerusalem. Read. That is set on a hill cannot be hid. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. A city that is set on a hill. The hill, what is that talking about? The top government on earth. Read again. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. Come on. Ye are the light of the world. Read. A city that is set on a hill, that is set on a hill, cannot be hid. Come on. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. You see that thing? It says, neither do men light a candle. What is the candle? The Bible. The candle is the Bible. Meaning what? You receive the scriptures, you don't apply the commandments, you will die for that thing. Because that means you hate your nation. Read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 15. Read. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. You cannot be hiding that candle because your job is to be a light to your brethren that don't know this truth. Read. And but put but on a candlestick. But you must what? But on a candlestick. But you must put it on a candlestick because when you put it on a candlestick, it's going to light up the room. That's what he's saying. So what is that talking about? That candlestick, you are the candlestick. Okay? Your job is to walk in the one in the darkness. Where's the darkness? Where people is found. Because there are people are walking in darkness. Read. But on a candlestick, uh -huh. and, give it, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. What did he say? And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Give me Matthew 15, 24. It giveth light unto all that are in the house. What is this house making reference to? Matthew 15, verse 24. Get that? Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Read. But he answered and said, uh -huh. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that house in Matthew 5, verse 15, is talking about the house of Israel. The house of Israel is what has been referenced here. Go back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 15 again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 15. Read. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, Read. but on a candlestick. Uh -huh. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So your job as the candle, you're supposed to be that light that shines in the house of Israel. Where's the house of Israel? In slavery. So your job when you learn this truth is to understand that it's not about you. It's about the 12 tribes of Israel. So when you learn this truth and you don't apply, guess what? You hate your nation. You're supposed to take this Bible and apply it to your life so that the people can start asking you questions. Brother, what's that? This brother is different. What are you doing in your life? Brother, by the way, we are Jews. Here's a flyer. Come to the school. That's the job. That's the mission. That's you being that candle. Sisters too. Understand them. Read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse chapter 5, verse 15. Come on. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, Read. but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. It giveth light unto all that are in the house. Watch this. What he's saying, he says, don't get a candle and put it under a bushel and hide it. What you hiding it for? Give me that to Sarah 32, Sarah 33, verse 17. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 33, verse 17. Watch what Sirach says here in the Spirit of Christ. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 17. Come on. Consider that I labored not for myself only. What did he say? Consider that I labored not for myself only. He says, I'm not laboring for myself only. Watch this, come on. But for all them that seek learning. You see that thing? But for all them that seek learning. Who's there? The house of Israel. The house of Israel seek learning. You saw what, what was going on when we were at camp yesterday. Our brothers, our brothers, they are thirsty for this truth. You understand? So much so they even sat down on the grass to hear the word of God. That's letting you know that they've tried everything. Nothing is working. This is the only way our brothers and sisters will be set in order. This is what's going to quench your thirst. Not politics, not religion, none of them. The laws of God. Read that again. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 17. Come on. Consider that I labor not for myself only, uh -huh. but for all them that seek, learn. Next verse. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, uh -huh. and hearken with your ears. You see what he's saying? He's talking to you men now, you brothers. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 18. Come on. Hear me, O ye great men of the people. O ye great men of the people. Read. And hear, and, and hearken with your ears. And hearken with your ears, meaning what? Open your spiritual ears and hear what the Lord is saying. Read. Ye rulers of the congregation. You see that thing right there? Rulers of the congregation. What is that? The leaders of the people. That's what he's saying. You rulers of the congregation, leaders of the people, and you lead the people by the wisdom of the Most High, not by your feelings, not how you feel, no, by the laws of God. Read that part again, or you what? Oh, ye great men of the people, read and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. Ye rulers of the congregation. Go back to where was that? Matthew 5, verse 15 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 15. Come on. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Come on. And it give it light unto all that are in the house. Okay, sorry about that, brothers and sisters. Read that. Verse 15. Matthew chapter 5, verse 15. Come on. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Read. And it give it light unto all that are in the house. Next verse. Let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. Come on. That they may see your good works. That they may what? That they may see your good works. That they may see your good works. Meaning what? Somebody has to see you keeping God's laws. They must see your dress code. They must see by your conduct. They must see by your speech. Okay? And how you deal with others. That's how they're going to know. He's got the gospel right there. You understand? Wherever you are, whether it's around your family members, whether it's around the people that you used to know in the world, they must see a difference. To me, it's not the same way. You understand? Brother, blessing is not the same way. But if you're around them, you're doing some evil stuff, and when you're with us, you pretend to be good, you full of BS. The people in your the world, they must see a change in you. You understand? That's how you become that light that shines in a dark place. Because your job is to make sure that they might not return today, but they're going to start to see your, you changing. They're going to see, okay, something going on with that brand. Read that again. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Read. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so, so shine before men. What is that light? The laws of God. Read. That they may see your good works. That the house of Israel may see your good works. The, your, the house of Israel is within and without. You understand? Outside of this truth and in this truth. So the house of Israel outside of this truth must see you. The house of Israel inside of this truth must see you. They must be able to see something going on with the brother. Something going on with the sister. Let me speak to the sister. Let me speak to the brother. Brother, you used to do such and such. What's going on? What are you doing? I also want to change. That's how you become that light that shines. So don't be me, Mr. Goody Two Shoes around us, but when you're outside, you, the devil, the Bible speaks of, that means you're double-minded. You understand? That means you're double-minded. Don't nobody gonna believe you. Okay? And guess what? You're gonna make us look bad. Because when we go to camp, and last night you slept with a prostitute, and you're at camp rebuking, guess what? They're gonna think everybody's like that in that camp. So it's not about one man. It's not about one woman. No, it's about all of us as a nation. So when you go out there, sisters, do not be doing some evil stuff. You understand? It's a what kind of a, what that they're going to say, oh, they're, they're a bunch of hypocrites. So we can't be like that, okay? We must be consistent across the board. I know it's difficult, but we have to do it. We must do it. It's the commandments. We must discipline our lives to make sure that we walk according to what is written in this book. You understand? And what they must know. That brother right there, that's a good brother. That sister right there, that is good sister right there. You understand? You don't have to be talking about the Bible at the, at the, at the, at the, at the job place. But they might just see by your conduct that that sister, that's a good sister. Even your enemies will be at peace with you. 
You understand? They will find something against you. They're not going to have anything to speak against you when you speak this truth. When you deal according to the Bible, you deal right with one, with, with one another, with, even with the other nations. Because you can't say, okay, that's an Arab man, that means I can steal. No, the scripture says, thou shalt not steal. It didn't say thou shalt not steal from an Arab. It didn't say thou shalt not steal from an Edomite. No. It says thou shalt not steal. Full stop. So you can't say, oh no, that means I can lie to the white man. I can lie to the Chinese man because they are not the, the people of the book. No. The Bible says don't bear false witness. It's across the board what we are reading here. Okay? Read it again, verse 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Come on. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. The light is the Bible, the laws of God. You applying it. Not you just knowing them, but you applying. Read. That they may see your good works. That they may what? That they may see your good works. So they must be able to see those good works. What are those good works? Give me that in 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy. That they may see your good works. 1 Timothy chapter 1, read verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Come on. But we know that the law is good. The law is what? The law is good. The law is good. We know that the law is good. Come on. If a man use it lawfully. If a man use it lawfully. So you can't say, I'm going to apply. I'm not going to steal from my brother. But I can steal from the, from the Chinese man. No. You must use the laws of God lawfully. You understand? You don't have a license to break God's commandments by going outside of your nation and stealing from them and say, but I'm not stealing from Israel. That's wicked as hell. That's not what the Bible says. You understand? Read that again. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. Come on. But we know that the law is good uh -huh. if a man use it lawfully. If a man use it lawfully. Give me that in uh, 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2 verse 5. Because we are at war. This is a spiritual war. We must fight. Okay? And as we are fighting, guess what happens? We need to make sure that we stay in the spirit. Okay? Read that. 2 Timothy 2 verse 5. 2 Timothy 2 verse 5. Come on. And if a man strive for masteries. If you, stry, if you strive for masteries, that's everybody. Sisters, brothers, you must strive for mastery. What is the mastery? You must master this Bible. You must know this Bible like the back of your hand. The same way you used to know the songs of the world and recite them. When a song come, comes on the radio, you're already ready to what? You're already moving your, your feet. You must do the same thing. You must, dance to the, you must dance to the tune of this Bible. You understand? You must dance to it. You must move to the tune of this Bible. Read it again. Second Timothy 2 verse 5. Uh -huh. And if a man strive for mysteries, yet he is not crowned. Yet is he not crowned. Come on. Yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. You see that thing? You must strive lawfully. You must do it according to the scripts. You must not do it unlawfully and say, no, but I can do it because I'm doing it to... No, no, no. Thou shalt not. Period. Okay? Go back to Matthew 5, verse 16. Again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Read. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. Read. That they may see your good works. That they may see your good works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's why I mentioned it's not about you. It's about the Father which is in heaven. The most High God that which is in heaven. So when you don't apply, it's not about you. It's about the Father. Everything that we're doing is the glory of the Most High God. You understand? That's why we say all praises to the Most High. Why are we saying that for? Because everything is to glorify Him. It's not about any of us. It's about the Father. We must glorify Him. Because what happened to Moses? What happened to Moses? He failed to follow a simple instruction. They say, you're not going to see the kingdom. You're not going to enter into the promised land. You understand? They say you're not going to enter because he failed to fail, he failed to follow a simple instruction and he couldn't enter in. He said, but Lord, I made a mistake. He said, no. He kept repeating it over and over. I'm sorry, please, I made a mistake. The Lord said, no, you're not going to enter into the promised land. You're not entering. Meaning at that time when they were going in. 
He's only not going to enter because he did not glorify me before the children of Israel. Because he says, shall I take water out of this rock? That's what he said. Which is not him, it's the Father. So this whole time when Moses was, he was doing miracles, it was the Father, it was for the glory of the Father. Not himself. You understand? Read that again, verse 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Come on. Let your light so shine before men, uh -huh. that they may see your good works. Read. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. So that's the, that's the objective. To glorify the Father which is in heaven. It's not about us. It's about the Father. Because Christ is the same. He put the glory on the Father. Watch this. Matthew 19, 16. Read that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Come on. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? You see what he's saying to him? Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Listen to what the Messiah says. Come on. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Uh -huh. That is God. You see that thing? There is not good but one, but that is God. That's what he said right there. He put the glory on the Father. You understand? Watch another one. Give me that in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Revelation chapter 19 verse 8. Uh -huh. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Read. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. I am thy what? I am thy fellow servant. Is that a verse 9? The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 9. Read. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Okay, come on. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. These are the true sayings of God. Those that come to the marriage supper of the Lamb is the 12 tribes of Israel. Because we are... We are, we are the bride. The Lord is the what? The Lord is the what? All praises. Read that again. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 9. Read. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. These are the true sayings of God. Read. And I fell at his feet to he worship did, him. He did what? And I fell at his feet to worship him. So now he said he fell at his feet. He fell at the angel's feet to worship the angel. Watch this, come on. And he said unto me, uh -huh. See thou do not. He says, Don't do that. Don't do that. Read. He says, Don't fall at, don't fall at my feet to worship me. Read. I am thy fellow servant. What did he say? I am thy fellow servant. I am thy fellow servant. Okay, read. And of thy brethren. Of thy what? And of thy brethren. That's some heavy stuff right there. Read. That have the testimony of Jesus. Read. Worship God. What did he say? Worship God. What did he say? Worship God. Worship God. Hold that. Give me Acts 529. Worship God. Worship God. Acts 5, verse 29. Let's get that real quick. The book of Acts in the Bible is 29. Come on. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Read. We ought not to obey. We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. Go back to where was that? Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. Read. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. Uh -huh. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. You see what the angel said? Worship God. Don't fall on my feet. Worship the Father. He took the glory. He, he, he took the glory of himself he put it on the father that's the same thing that Christ did that's the same thing that the apostle Peter said in Acts 5.29 read worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy you see that thing right there so now let's get into the topic now okay let's get into the topic the power of submission the power of submission now we need to understand that because what we have been taught in the world right is left left is right Okay, up is down. You see that thing? Black is white. White is black. Now everything is the opposite in the world. You understand? Our, our job in the spirit of Christ is to set things in order. You understand that, brothers? Yes, sir. Okay, now, give me 2 Ezra 9 verse 18. 
Second Ezra chapter nine verse eighteen. Second Ezra chapter nine verse eighteen. Read. And now when I prepare the world, it says, and now when I prepare the world, is way back to the beginning, before anything was created, when we were still with the Most High in the spirit world. Read. Which was not yet made. Which was what? Which was not yet made. Which was not yet made. Meaning everything that you see, it wasn't made yet. But we were with the Father in the spirit world. Read. Which was not yet made. Uh -huh. Even for them to dwell in, the, in that now live. You see that? It says even for them to dwell in that now live. Come on. No man speak against you me. You see what he said? No man speak against me. No man speak against me. Because we was with the Father before the world was created. You understand? In the spirit world. Give me that in Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. We was with the Father. That's what he said right there. No man speak against me. Okay? The book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Read. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. What did he say? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. He says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. In the spirit world, the Lord knew us already. You understand? Read. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, uh -huh. and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. You see that thing? Before the, everything was created, we was ordained to be the prophets of the Most High God on this earth. Before the Lord said, let there be light, we was already ordained to be prophets. So this is not an accident that you are here, brothers and sisters. It's not an accident. You, we was with the Father before he said, let there be light. We was there in the spirit, in the spirit realm. You understand? Give me that in Daniel 12 verse 13. We was ordained to be prophets to the Most High God before the world was. That's what it says. For then, no man spake against me. We obeyed. You understand? Read that. Daniel 12. Daniel chapter 12 verse 13. Uh -huh. But go thou thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Read that again verse 13. Daniel chapter 12 verse 13. Uh -huh. But go thou thy way till the end Stop be. Right. Till the what? Till the end be. So till the end be. It's talking about the last days. The last days. Till the end be. Come on. For, for thou shalt rest. For thou shalt rest. Meaning we are going to be delivered from captivity. That's what Daniel is being told here. Read. And stand in thy Lord's And for what? And stand in thy Lord. And stand in thy Lord. What is the Lord? Being a prophet. Being a prophet. That's your Lord. Our Lord that was given to us was to be the prophets of the Lord. That's what he's saying. Read. And stand in thy Lord at the end of the days. At the what? At the end of the days. Meaning Daniel will be there. Daniel will be right there at the end of days. Guess what? Daniel is back. Understand that? All the prophets are back this day. You understand? Nehu, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Abraham, Shem, they are all back. Understand that thing? Shifra, Pua, Judith, they are all back. You better understand, you better ask yourself, which forefather you want to pattern yourself against? You want to pattern yourself after? Which foremother you want to pattern yourself after? It's up to you. Okay? You are born in Israel, you are written in the book of life. You have to be the devil to take yourself out of this book. That's up to you. Don't nobody going to say, no, it was not, no. You were, that's your Lord. Our Lord is to be the prophet of the Lord. When you take yourself out of the book and say, no, I'm upset because the brother checked me. He wasn't, he wasn't nice to me. The hell is this? Listen, it's not about how you feel in this truth. You go off, you're going to get checked. Why? Because we want to make sure that everybody is in order. We follow the commandments of the Most High God. Why? Because we want to make sure that our people understand what it means to be in order. Because to be in order today is looked at as a bad thing. That's not what the Bible says. It's a glorious thing. The nations are in order. Why is there a problem when we want to be in order? The nations are in order. You should look at them. The military. You understand? Look at them. Look at the government on earth. In complete order. They honor one another. But when it comes to us, no. Who does he think he is? Keep it moving. There's the door. 
We don't got time to we don't got time for BS in this truth. Why? We've got a nation to raise up. Our sons and daughters, they need this thing. You understand? They need the gospel of Christ. This is the clean glass of water that our people need. And our job is to deliver the truth unto them. That's our job this day. No games. Okay? Go back to 2nd Essence 9, verse 18. 2nd Essence 9, verse 18. Read. And now when I prepared the world, uh -huh. which was not yet made, Come on. even for them to dwell in that now live, Read. no man spake against me. No man spake against me because we, we obeyed. We was given the command, what we were supposed to do, we obeyed. There was no, mm, ah, but I think, no. There was none of them. You understand? Next verse. For then, every, everyone obeyed. You see what it says right there? For then, everyone obeyed. Everybody understood what was being told, what was being commanded. And everyone said, okay, yes, I'm going to get that thing done. I'm going to do it. This is for them, everyone obeyed. Watch this. Give me Genesis chapter 1. Let's deal with our forefather Adam. Because when the most said God, he had a concept, the idea of creating the human race. Quote unquote, because that's not what it says, really. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, give me the book of Tobit real quick. Let me see something. Let me see something. Tobit. Hmm. Okay, we're not gonna use we're not gonna say the human race. We'll say mankind. Because mankind is in the Bible. Give me that in Tobit 8. Tobit chapter 8. Read verse 5. No, read verse 6. Tobit 8 verse 6. Okay? The book of Tobit 8 verse 6. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. Come on. Of them camest. Of them came mankind. Of them came what? Of them came mankind. That's when the Lord had a concept of creating mankind on earth. From the spirit realm to the physical realm, which is where? On earth. Okay? Read that part again. The book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6. Read. Thou made his Adam and gave us to Eve his wife uh -huh. for an helper and stay. For an helper and stay. Read. Of them came mankind. Of them came mankind. The book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6. Uh -huh. Thou made us Adam. And gave us him, Eve, his wife, for right. help and stay. Come on. Of them came mankind. Uh -huh. Thou hast said, It is not good that man should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. Read. And now, O Lord, I take not this. Okay, that's it, that's, it, that's it on that. Verse 6. What I wanted to get out of that is that the word mankind, when the Most High had the concept of creating mankind on earth, from the spirit, from the spiritual realm, into the physical realm, which is what we call earth. Okay? Give me the book of Genesis 1 26. Let's take a step back. Okay? Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Read. And God said, Let us make man in our image. Let us what? And God said, Let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. Okay? That's when now the Lord says, Okay, the Lord had a council with the angels, and Christ is saying, Okay. Let us make man in our image. Where? In this physical realm, which is where? Earth. Read. After our likeness. Uh -huh. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Read. And, of, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So now, that's when the concept of what? Mankind came about. You understand? From what we read in 2nd Essence 9.18 to what we're reading here. Watch this. Now give me Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So now, this is when Adam was formed. Adam. Okay, the first man on this earth. Alpha Adam. You understand? This is Alpha Adam right here. Read the part again verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Come on. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Read. And man became a living soul. So now the Lord, he formed man, he formed Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Give me that in um, 
Second, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 7, 24. Let's see what is the breath of life. Wisdom of Solomon 7, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 24. Read. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Wisdom. So the subject matter is about wisdom. Wisdom is the subject. Read. She passes and goes through all things by reason of her pureness. Uh -huh. For she is the breath of the power of God. Because she is what? For she is the breath of the power of God. Okay. Read that again, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, 7, verse 24. Chapter 7, verse 24. Uh -huh. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Read. She passes and goes through all things by reason of her pureness. So, wisdom is a movement. Wisdom is a movement in itself. The reason why you, you see all the great movements that rose up, the one thing that did not have is the wisdom of the Lord. Wisdom is the greatest movement on earth. You understand? The reason why you, so you see uh, the movements didn't go far is because they did, nobody required anybody to change in those movements. What did they, what did they, what did they lack? Wisdom. Wisdom is a movement. You understand? What you see us rising up, this is the movement that wisdom is, this is the movement that wisdom is capable of doing. To move mountains. To heal the people. You understand? The people that have been trodden down for thousands of years, look what the move, the move, the, the power of wisdom of the Lord is doing. Waking all of us up. Okay? Understand that. Read on. For she is the breath of the power of God. She is the what? For she is the breath of the power of God. Wisdom is the breath of the power of God. Read. And a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. So wisdom is a pure influence. Okay? Read. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. Nothing defiled can fall into wisdom. You understand? Go back to where was that now? Genesis 2 verse 7. Now we understand what was given to Adam. Adam was given the breath of life. What is that? Wisdom. The commandments. Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. He became a living soul. Meaning what? That's when he was considered alive. You understand? He was given oxygen, but he was given life on top of that oxygen. You understand? He was given oxygen, mm -hmm. but he was given life. Understand that? What is that life? The laws of God. That was what that is what was given to Adam. Second Exodus 3 verse 4. Now we need to understand something. The, the topic of the class is the power of submission. You understand? The power of submission. You might be wondering, why is he talking about Adam? Pay attention. Okay? Second Exodus 3 verse 4. Let's start there. Second Exodus 3 verse 4. Come on. O Lord, who bearest room, uh -huh. thou speakest at the beginning, when thou didn't plan, when thou didst plan, plant the earth, uh -huh. and that thyself alone, and commandments, and commandest the people. And commanded the people. So Ezra is the is rehearsing the history of Genesis. Read. And gave his name body unto Adam without soul. Stop right there. What did he do? And gave his name body unto Adam without soul. That's the oxygen. That's the oxygen right there. He gave a body to Adam without what? Without soul. You see that thing? He was given oxygen. What is the next thing that the Lord did? Read. Which was the workmanship of thy hands, and didst breathe into him the breath of life. That's the life right there. So he was given oxygen first, then life was breathed into him. You see that thing? Read that part again. Maybe some of you have missed this thing. Read it again for the brothers. Second Ezra 3, verse 5. Come on. And gave his name body unto Adam without soul. Without soul. Read. Which was the workmanship of thine hand. Uh -huh. So at this point, Adam was given what? Oxygen. Read. And it is breathed into him the breath of life. Now he's given life now. So what is this saying? What is this saying? It means, okay, I'm going to keep it moving. 
I don't want to get into it because I'm going to get on the topic. Read. And he was made living before thee. He was made what? And he was made living before thee. He was made living before the Lord when he was given the breath of life. Wisdom. You understand? Come on. And thou leadest him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted. Hold this. Remember, Adam was given what? Wisdom. Adam was given the breath of life. Watch this. Something just popped into my head. Give me that in Sarah 45. Ecclesiastes 45, verse 26. Verse 25. Hmm, let me see. Verse 26. Sarah 45, the last verse. Ecclesiastes 45, verse 26. Read. God gave you wisdom in your heart to judge his people in righteousness. That's why Adam was given the wisdom. Adam was given wisdom to judge. So what was Adam? Adam was a judge. Okay? Adam was a judge. He was a prophet. Adam was a prophet. He was a God on earth. You understand? Read again, verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 45, verse 26. Read. God give you wisdom in your heart to judge his people in righteousness. Uh -huh. That their good things be not abolished. That the good things be not abolished. What is the good things? The kingdom. The laws and the kingdom, because through the laws we get the kingdom. Read. And that their glory may endure forever. You see that thing? That our glory may endure forever. That we may rule forever the nations on earth. That's what he's saying. Go back to go back to Second Ezra 3 verse 5. Again. Second Ezra 3 verse 5. Uh -huh. And gave us a body unto Adam without soul. Read. Which was the workmanship of thine hand. Come on. And did us breathe into him the breath of life, uh -huh. and he was made living before thee. Jump down to verse 7. Second Ezra chapter 3 verse 7. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. You see what was given to Adam? So he's clarifying the breath of life in verse 5. He's explaining it in verse 7. Read that again, verse 7. Second Ezra chapter 3 verse 7. Uh -huh. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. Thou givest, thou givest unto Adam commandment. That's the breath of life. Read. To love thy way. Read. Which he transgressed. Which he what? Which he transgressed. Come on. And immediately thou appointest death in him and his generations. Read. Of who came nations and tribes, uh -huh. people and kindreds, and out of number. Next verse. Verse 8. And every people walked after their own will. And what? And every people walk after their own will. And every people, because there were multiple nations that was created during the time of Genesis. It wasn't just Adam and Eve. It was Adam, the Alpha Adam, he was made first. But the nations were created also. Read. That's what it says. And every people walk after their own will. Meaning what? They were self-willed. Read. And every people walked after their own will uh -huh. and did wonderful things before thee Read. and despised thy commandments. That, you see what Adam was doing? Adam was teaching the people the commandments. Adam was a God on earth. His job was to teach the people the laws of God. That was, that was Adam's job. Okay? Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 1. And because of what was given to Adam, the breath of life, it made Adam a God on earth. You understand? Among the nations that was created during the time of Genesis. Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 1. Read. She preserved the first form father of the world. The she is wisdom. Wisdom preserved the first form father of the world. Adam was the first form father of the world. The Alpha Adam. Read. That was created alone. That was what? That was created alone. He was created alone. Adam was a god. Adam was so powerful that Adam, you don't read about you don't read in the Bible where Adam just Adam was a small baby. Adam was created as a man. He was fully grown when Adam was created. You see that thing? You, if you read Genesis 2, verse 7, you don't see when it says Adam was popped out of his mother's womb. Where do you read that? When Adam was created, he was a full grown man. All power. All glorious. Read that again. Was the Solomon chapter ten verse one? Come on. She preserved the first form father of the world. Read. That was created alone uh -huh. and brought him out of his fall. Read. 
and gave him power to rule all things. What did he do? And gave him power to rule all things. And gave him power to rule all things. Now, you have to think about it and imagine this, okay? So, in order for the Lord to give you power, what is that power? Wisdom. That power is the wisdom that was given to Adam. You understand? That means Adam was what? Adam was obedient. There is no way that the Most High God can bestow so much power on this one man if Adam wasn't obedient. It's impossible. That's why it says there's power in submission. You're not going to get no power, no rulership if you don't humble down to this Bible. The Most High God put wisdom on our forefathers because they were what? They were submissive to what is written. They were submissive to what was commanded of them. You understand? That's why they had power to rule all things. Read that again, verse 2. Wisdom of Solomon to the 10, verse 2. Come on. And gave him power to rule all things. And gave him power to rule all things. Everything and everyone. You understand? Sarah 46, last verse. Ecclesiastes 46, verse 20. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. 49, 49, I'm sorry. 49, verse 16. Read that. Ecclesiastes 49, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Shem and Seth were in great honor among men, and so was Adam above every living thing in the creation. You see that thing? It's a, and, so was, and so was Adam above every living thing in the creation. Adam was a God on earth. You understand? And the power that the Lord gave unto him, it was based upon what? Submission. There is power in submission. So when you come in here and you are given an order, you still have something to say, listen, you're not going to get the kingdom. You are not going to get the kingdom. I'm going to tell you straight up. Sisters too, understand that. You will not get the kingdom if we're giving you instruction, say, oh, but I think, listen, you will not get the kingdom if you don't repent from the spirit. Brothers too. Because brothers have a thing, you give them the instruction, you think you are wrong. I'll give a simple instruction. I'll, I gave a simple instruction. Simple. I want to I show you that how simple the instruction is. Change your proper picture because we need to promote the work that has been done in the body. Nganga put the picture of Adam and Eve. He put a picture of Adam being created out of the soil. How many people did it? Very few people did it. You see how simple that thing is? How many people did it? Did anybody, did all of you did it? No. Because when I look at what I see that thing. You know why? Because you don't understand the spirit of unity, one mind. You understand? You need to understand that the reason why we are doing this is sort of what we can support the, the, the works that are being done in the world. Who are going to see? How are the people going to see the work that the Lord is doing if you don't put the stuff out there? The reason why we are doing it is somebody can ask you that thing. And guess what? We are putting in a God mindset. That's what we're doing. That's why that instruction goes out. Because you don't believe that you are a God with a Bible in your hand and fringes on the with fringes on the bottle of blue. The reason why the instruction is going on is because we can put you in that God mindset. The same mindset that our forefather Adam was. You understand? The sisters, the reason why I told the sisters, I need you to change the picture. Make sure that we the picture on, on, on your face, on your whatever social media platform, particularly what them. Put it there. You know what that says? It says, I come from this man. I submit to the black man. Despite what the world says. Because the world says, the black woman does not have to submit to the black man. To, to the black man. Not realizing that she submitting to the black man, guess what? She gets the kingdom. Guess what? She will be empowered when we get the kingdom. The reason why we are doing this, we support the, the truth from within. One mind, one spirit. Unity. That's why when you go to the military of the world, and guess what? They get it from here. Simple instruction. They get it from here. The way they fold the clothes, everybody does it the same way. You don't want to fold your, your shirt like this, the other one. No. They tell you. First thing in the morning, 3 o'clock, you're up. They make sure that the, the, the drill sergeants will be on everybody's bed. When they find you, they must find you standing up, everything folded. And they check it. 
if everything is folded the right way. And they make sure that you fold it in the time or not. If they say three minutes, you must be done. Why do they do that? Single-mindedness. Because when it's time to go to war, we don't have time. We don't, there's no room for error. There's no I'm sorry when your brother is blown up by a bomb. There's no I'm sorry. The brother is dead. That's why we do this. You brothers, I need you to be in the mindset of a, of a soldier. The, the only thing that is in the mind of a soldier is what? War. War. You cannot be busy getting distracted of something dumb in the world. There's no room for that stuff. When we go to camp, I need to see everybody in order. Why? Because there's no room for error. You can't say I'm sorry. When you are given a specific instruction on how you need to move. Because when you are up there, guess what? You need to make sure that you are your brother's keeper. Spiritually and physically. That's what it is. That's why we read the book of Joshua. That's exactly what Joshua was doing. That's exactly what Moses was doing. That's exactly what King David was doing. King David's man, complete order. So we're not going to have the brother with the nigger mindset. Excuse my friend, but that's what niggas in the Bible. Let's read it. Give me the book of Acts chapter 13. In case some of the things I'm just, you know. Give me Acts 13 verse 1. Because nigger it is in the Bible. You understand? Acts 13 verse 1. I'm sorry I'm digressing. But the Spirit just hit me on this thing. We are at war. Okay? Read that. Acts 13 verse 1. Read. Now there was in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called nigger. What was called what? That was called nigger. That we might be justified in what we say. Go back to where was that? Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 2 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 2. Come on. And gave him power to, to rule all things. And gave him power to rule all things. The reason why the nations envy us is because of what? Is it because we are in our simple state of mind? No. They envy us when we get hold of this Bible. When you get hold of this Bible, yeah, that's when you're going to get the nation's attention. But as long as you're still moving in the nigger mindset, you're not going to get the nation's attention. That's why the politics, they do whatever they want. They give them the platform even to push the garbage. But they're not going to give you the platform to push this. Because they know what this means. This book is a life. This book right here, this book is a lie. The Spirit of the Lord is in this book. You understand? You're only going to get the people's attention. And I'm talking about the other nations and our people too. When you move according to what is written in this book. You brothers understand that? All oh, praises. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel 31. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 31. Because the reason why Adam had power to rule all things is because of what? Submission. He obeyed the word of God until he did not. When Eve, his wife, deceived him through what the serpent did to his wife. But the point is, Adam obeyed at, at, up to a point until he fell. You understand? But the point is, he did that thing. And he was given power to rule everything and everyone. Because of what? He was submissive to the laws of God. You sisters understand that? Okay. Ezekiel 31. This is a parable. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just want to touch some key points. Ezekiel 31 verse 1. Ezekiel 31 verse 1. Come on. And it came to pass in the 11th year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Ray. Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude, whom thou, who art thou like in Thy greatness. Who am who he says, Who art thou like in thy greatness? So this goes into Adam, actually. He's talking about Adam here. Jump down to verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 4. The waters made him great. The waters made him great. The waters goes into the laws, the wisdom of God. Come on. The deep set him up on high above with her rivers running round about his plants. Really? And and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Unto all the trees of the field, meaning the nations that the Lord created. 
because Arab was given wisdom and power to rule everything and everyone. Rain. Therefore, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field. The trees in this case, give me that in, uh, in, give me that in uh, Mark, Mark 8, in case somebody is confused about that. Mark chapter 8, Mark 8, 24. Mark chapter 8, verse 24. Rain. And he looked up and said, I see men. I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. So this is a similitude. Go back to where he was at. Ezekiel 31 verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 31 verse 5. Rain. Therefore, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his bows were multiplied. Uh -huh. And his branches became long because of the multitude. Because of the multitude of waters. Because of the what? Because of the multitude of waters. Because the multitude of waters. What is that? Wisdom. The, 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 the amount of wisdom that the Lord bestowed on Adam. That's why it says, because of the multitude of the waters. The trees is making reference to men on earth. The waters is making reference to what? The laws of God. Give me Ephesians 5.26 real quick. Ephesians 5.26. Ephesians chapter 5 is 26. Uh -huh. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You see that thing? So the water is the word of God. Go back. Ezekiel chapter 31 verse 5. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his bows were multiplied, and his branches became long. Come on. Because of the multitude of waters, when he shot forth. You see that thing? Because of the multitude of wisdom that the Lord bestowed upon Adam. Because the only way you can get power to rule all things and everyone, you have to bow down. You have to humble down to the laws of God. Adam did that thing. Adam did that thing. Watch this. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Give me some up one. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse... Sirach hmm. chapter 1 and verse 26. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 26. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. Read that again, verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 26. Come on. If thou desire wisdom, uh -huh. keep the commandments. If you desire wisdom, you must keep the commandments. So guess what? Adam, he, what did he do? He desired that wisdom. He kept the commandments. He was obedient to the Most High. And guess what? He was given wisdom above everything and everyone from the creation the creation account. Come on. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. And the Lord shall give her unto thee. Sarah 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 24. Ecclesiastes 24 and verse 22. Ecclesiastes chapter 24, verse 22. Come on. He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded. You see that thing? He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded. Come on. He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded, and they that work by me shall not do amiss. You see that thing? And they that work by me shall not do amiss. Meaning what? You're not going to go off. And if you do, you get, guess what? You're going to rise back up. You understand? Read. All these things. Hold on. Let me see. Hmm. Read verse 19. Ecclesiastes 24, verse 19. Come unto me, all ye that are desirous of me, uh -huh. and fill yourselves with my fruits. What did he say? And fill yourselves with my fruits. And fill yourselves with my fruits. What is the fruit of wisdom? You can read about that in Galatians 5.22. Because I don't want to go there now. Because I need to still go through the class. Okay, I have a lot to go over. Read that again, verse 19. Ecclesiastes 24, verse 19. Come on. Come unto me, all ye that be desirous of me. Uh -huh. And fill yourselves with my fruits. If you are desirous of wisdom, it says what? It says, I will fill you with my fruits. What is that? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Those are the fruits of wisdom in, 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 in summary. But you can read about them in detail in Galatians 5. Okay? Go back to Ezekiel 31. Ezekiel 31 verse 5 again. Ezekiel 31 verse 
three, one plus five. Yeah. Therefore, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his bows were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of horses. Uh -huh. When he shot both, jump down to verse seven. Ecclesiastes, Ezekiel chapter three, one verse seven. Thus was he fair in his greatness. He was what? Thus was he fair in his greatness. Because wisdom made him beautiful. Wisdom beautified Adam. You understand? Read it again. Ezekiel chapter 34, chapter 31, verse 4. Verse 7. Verse 7. Uh -huh. Thus was he fair in his greatness. Uh -huh. In the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. His root was by great waters. He was rooted and grounded in the wisdom of God. You understand? Watch this. Come on. Verse 8. The cedars in the garden of, of God could not hide him. You see that thing? The cedars in the garden of God could not hide Adam. Really? The fir trees were not like his bow. He was not like anybody that was created. Really? And the chestnut trees were not like his branches. Meaning was talk about the nations that the Lord created during that time. Really? No, any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. You see that thing? That's what we read in the sermon. It says, Thus was he fair in his greatness. So here, what is it? What? Read that part again. No, any tree in the garden? No, any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. You see that thing? Was like unto him in his beauty. He was not like any other creation that the Lord made. He was above everything and everyone. And how do you get that power? Submission. Submission. You understand? Because it says he gave unto Adam what? Wisdom. So if something, somebody gives something to you, you have the choice. You have the decision to say, I'm going to accept it or not. So what did Adam do? He accepted it. He received it. He believed it. You understand? Read verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 3, 1 verse 9. Uh -huh. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. You see that thing? That's why the trees, meaning what? Men, nations that was created, they envied Adam. Why? Because of his wisdom. Because of what? His submissiveness. Because of his obedience to the laws of God. That's why Adam had power to rule all things and everyone. So we need to understand that the only way we're going to receive power to rule all nations, to get the kingdom, we must submit ourselves to the righteousness of God. Watch this. Give me that in Romans 10. Romans chapter 10 and verse 3. Romans chapter 10 verse 3. For they be ignorant of God's righteousness uh -huh. and going about to establish their own righteousness. That's the spirit of disobedience that we're reading here. Ignorance of God's righteousness and what? Going about to establish your own righteousness. So you see that part? It means this type of individuals, they know about God's righteousness. That's why it says, read that part again, for they what? For they be ignorant of God's righteousness. So they know God's righteousness. That's why they know how to ignore it. They are ignorant of God's righteousness, come on. And going about to establish their own righteousness. So they, that means they have, to have, they have to have knowledge of what's written and what? And knowledge of what's not written or knowledge of what? What was not commanded. So that's why they are able to say, what? I'm going to ignore that, but I'm going to take this. Therefore, they know God's commandments, but they are choosing not to. They're going left. You understand? Read that again. Romans the 10 verse 3, for they be ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. What did Adam do? He submitted himself to the righteousness of God. That's what Adam did. Because Adam understood power in submission. He understood that thing. You understand? Eve understood it up to a point. She understood it up to a point because she wanted to be on, on what? On Adam's level. That was the problem. You understand? But the, the key is Adam understood the power of submission. He understood that. You understand? 
Watch this. Now, let's move on now. Give me the book of Genesis 5, verse 28. Genesis chapter 5, verse 28. We're going to move to our next forefather now. Genesis 5. Our forefather Noah. Okay? Genesis chapter 5, verse 28. Read that. Genesis chapter 5, verse 28. Read. And Lamech lived 180 and two years and begat a son. I need some power in this thing. Come on. And he called his name Noah, saying, the same shall comfort us concerning our work and toll of our hands uh -huh. because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. Read that again, verse 29. Genesis chapter 5, verse 29. And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work, our work and toil of our hands uh -huh. because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. So it says, Noah will be a comfort to the nation. No one will be used as a comfort. You understand? It says, and he shall eat, and he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. What is this talking about? Give me Genesis 3, verse 17. Genesis 3, verse 17. Read. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, because thou hast done what? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because you have hearkened, you have listened unto the voice of your wife. Read. Really? Some of you brothers, you better understand. We went over a lot of marriage classes. You better make sure that you pair yourself with the right spouse. Okay? Because if you don't, when teach, the, the day she decides, you know what, to hell with this Bible, what you going to do? Are you going to follow her? Are you going to be under her skirt? Because that's the question. Or, or you sisters, if the de if the brother turns into a black ashy demon and say to hell with the Bible, to hell with leadership, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna follow the man, or you gonna stand for this Bible and say I'm not going nowhere? I'm gonna keep these laws. The goal is the kingdom. You better ask yourself that if you gonna do that. You understand? You better ask yourself that thing. So you brothers, there's some spirits I'm picking up. You better make sure that you correct that thing. Go over the marriage classes because I'm not going to go over that thing. When I go over, I'm going to blast you. Understand that? You better go over the classes. You better read that stuff. Because if you don't, guess what's going to happen years from now? I'm going to ask you, sir, but you know the scriptures, brother. So why are you following the woman? That's exactly what happened here. Read that again. Verse 17. Genesis. What is Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. Come on. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, Read. and hast eaten of the tree, with which I commanded thee, saying. Because this tree that he says there was commanded not to eat, is talking about the philosophies. Because who generally comes with his philosophies? I'm not saying the man doesn't, but generally who doesn't? The woman. They are the ones that are filled in the Christian church. Okay? They are the ones that come. There's a thing. What, what is that? Okay, let me just not go there. I'm not going to go there. Read verse 17 again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. Come on. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because what? Because you obey your wife. Because you obey your wife. Read. And has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Read. Thou shalt not eat of it. Uh -huh. Curses the ground for thy sake. You see that thing? That's what we just read in Genesis 5.29. Genesis 5.29, that's what we are reading here. Read. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You see that thing? We are toiling now. Curses the ground for our sins. Now we have to work for stuff. We didn't have to do that. Adam, guess what? Adam was given everything. Power to rule everything. Adam was, everything was handed to him on a silver plate. You understand? Because of the power of submission. There's power behind them. When you submit to the laws of God, that's a power move. I want to say to you, brothers, and sisters too. That's a power move. When you reject this law, guess what? That's a weak move. That's a coward move. Submission, that's a power move right there. That's checkmate. Submission, that's a checkmate move. Go back to where we was at. Genesis 5, verse 29. 
Come on. Genesis chapter 5, verse 9. Read. And he called his name Noah, saying, The same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands, uh -huh. because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. Read. And Lamech lived after he began Noah 590 and 5 years. Read. And began sons and daughters. Uh -huh. And all the days of Lamech were 770 and 7 years. And he died. Come on. And Noah was 500 years old. And Noah began Shem, Ham, and Jeff. So now, let's deal with our forefather Noah. Okay? You see what he says? He says, Noah shall comfort us. How will Noah comfort us? Okay? I'm going to fast forward to the future. Okay? Just for a second. Romans 15 verse 4. We read this all the time. We went over this in class sometime. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Read that. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written before time uh -huh. were written for our learning. Read. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see that then? So what comforts us? How did Noah comfort our forefathers back then? Noah taught the gospel. Noah taught the laws of God. He taught the gospel of deliverance. That's what Noah taught. You understand? Go back. Give me Genesis 6 verse 8 now. Genesis chapter 6 verse 8. Genesis chapter 6 verse 8. Read. But Noah found grace in the sight, in the eyes of the Lord. Read. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Verse 9 again. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. He was a what? Noah was a just man. Noah was a just man. Noah was a just man. Give me Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel 18 verse 5. It says Noah was a just man. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 5. Come on. But if a man be just. If a man be what? If a man be just. If a man be just. Come on. And do that which is lawful and right. And do what? And do that which is lawful and right. So Noah was doing that which was lawful and right in the sight of God. Go back to where he was at now. Genesis 6 verse 9. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. Come on. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his right, in his generation. And he was what? And perfect in his generation. So Noah was perfect in his generation. Give me that in 1 Kings 8 61. Okay, read that. First Kings chapter eight, verse sixty-one. Come on. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. Read. To walk in His statutes and to keep His commandments at, as at this day. Read that again. First Kings chapter eight, verse sixty-one. Read. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. You see that thing? This is a commandment. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. Read. To walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. You see that thing right there? So now when it says, be perfect, it means keep the commandments. Be perfect means keep the commandments of the Most High God. That's what that means. Alright? Go back to where was that? Genesis 6 verse 9. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. Uh -huh. These are the generations of Noah. Read. Noah was a just man and perfect in the generations. Uh -huh. And Noah walked with God. Noah walked with the Lord. He walked with God. Okay? Read that, read that part again. Noah did what? And Noah walked with God. And Noah walked with God. Watch this. Jump down to verse 13. Genesis chapter 6 verse 13. Uh -huh. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. What did the Lord say? The end of all flesh is come before me. Now listen. Now notice it says, and God said unto Noah. That means Noah, he could talk with the Lord. You understand? That's how he found grace in the sight of the Most High. He spoke with the Lord. And God said unto Noah. Read. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. So imagine, the Most High is, is discussing the fate of the earth with Noah. Can you imagine that? That's some heavy stuff right there. He's discussing what he's going to do to this earth 
because of the wickedness that was rampant on the earth. He's discussing, he said, listen, this is what I'm going to do. So what does that mean? That means the most High God found so much grace in Noah and said, listen, he's worthy for me to discuss these things with. Think about that thing. That means Noah, he was, extreme, he was 100% submissive to what is written and to what the most High God commanded of him. You understand? Watch this. Give me. You know what? Finish that verse. Read verse 13 again. Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. Read. And God said unto know, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. You see that thing? Guess what this is? Give me Amos 3, verse 7. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. What we, just, what we are reading here is, is what Amos is saying right here. Amos 3 verse 7. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Uh -huh. Surely the Lord, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servant, the prophets. You see that thing? He will reveal his secret of how, what he's going to do. What, what's about to happen? He revealed those secrets to his servant, the prophets. Guess what you are, you brothers, this day? You are those prophets this day. You better believe that day. Okay? Go back to where he was at. Genesis 6, verse 13. Genesis 6, verse 13. And God said unto know, The end of all flesh is come before me. Right. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. He says, I will destroy them with the earth. So he's giving Noah the secret of what he's going to do. He's revealing the secret to Noah. Listen, this is what I'm going to do. I need you to do such and such before I come and wipe them. Do such and such. He's giving Noah an instruction. Build an ark. What is the Lord giving us the instruction to do today? Go out there and teach the gospel. Keep my commandments. Before I come and do what? Smite the earth with a curse. What are we being given? The secrets. The Lord is revealing unto us the blueprint of what he's going to do. All you have to do is just what? Believe what this is saying and apply it. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sarah 44 verse 17. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 44 verse 17. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 44 verse 17. Read. Really? Noah was found perfect and righteous. He was what? Noah was found perfect and righteous. That's the same thing that we just read in Genesis chapter 6. Noah was found perfect and righteous. He says Noah walked with God. He was a, he was a just and a perfect man. Read. Noah was found perfect and righteous. In the time of wrath, he was taken of exchange. In, in, no, not of, in. Read that again, verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 17. Come on. Noah was found perfect and righteous. In the time of wrath, he was taken in exchange for the world. You see that thing? He was taken in exchange for the world. Meaning what? He was taken in exchange so that the world can be what? Can be wiped. The people on the earth can be wiped. And he was delivered out of that destruction. Read. Therefore was he left as a remnant unto the earth when the flood came. When the Lord brought, brought forth judgment. The judgment is the same judgment we are reading about in Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. Read. An everlasting covenant was made with him. A what? An everlasting covenant was made with him. An everlasting covenant was made with Noah. The most high God made an everlasting covenant with Noah. Read. That all flesh should perish no more by the flood. That all flesh should perish no more by the flood. But guess what? This time the Lord will bring some fire. Okay? Not some. He's going to bring much fire. He will baptize. During the time of Noah, he baptized the earth with water. You understand? Guess what? During, when Christ returns, he will baptize it with what? With fire. That's him, it? During the time of Noah... Guess what? Water was used. That's heavy. During the time of John the Baptist, what was used? Water. When Christ returns, what's going to be used? Fire. Heavy stuff. 
Because the destruction of the water was temporary. The fire one, everlasting. Think about that thing. You see that thing? I hope you brothers and sisters are picking up what we are bringing out here. Alright? Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Peter 2 verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4. 2 Peter 2 verse 4. Come on. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into hell, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Now, this is the scripture that the brother on the seas pulled yesterday when we were teaching up there. Okay? He pulled this verse right here. See, you see, he judged the angels. He spared not the angels, he judged the angels. So, man on earth is talking about what? The east of the angels up in heaven. The angels do exactly as they are told. You understand? Because that's what they teach in the Christian church. They teach Greek mythology. That the angels slept with humans on earth. Or with mankind. That is not in the Bible. The angels that he didn't spare is talking about the sons of God before the flood came. Because that, were, that, that is what we was called before the flood. After the flood, we are called the children of Israel. You understand? Read that again. Verse 4. Second Peter 2 verse 4. Uh -huh. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved as judgment. Read verse 5 now. Next verse. Second Peter 2 verse 5. Come on. For if God and That's spared fine. not the world. And spared not the old world. Read that right. Second Peter 2, 2 verse 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, uh -huh. bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So Noah was a preacher of righteousness. That was as Noah was a just man. He was just according to the law. He was perfect and righteous in the sight of God. Noah, that's what says he will comfort us. How was Noah comforting the people? He taught them the laws of God. Saying, listen, prepare. The flood is coming. Prepare so that you don't get devoured. But they did not listen to Noah. They didn't listen to Noah what Noah was saying. Read that again. So, verse 5. Second Peter 2 verse 5. Read. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, uh -huh. a preacher of righteousness. A preacher of righteousness. That's how Noah was comforting the people. A preacher of righteousness. Read. Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Read. Okay, that's it on there. That's it on there. Genesis 9 verse 1. Remember, Noah, was, the Lord found grace in the sight of Noah. He did that thing. He found grace in the sight of Noah. Watch this. Because Noah was what? Noah was perfect. Noah kept the commandments. Noah was submissive to the Most High. That's why the Lord found grace in our forefather Noah. That's why he was able to comfort the people. Guess what? You brothers, the Lord has found grace in you. That's why you are able to go out to the streets and comfort the people. Think about that. You understand? That's a great honor. That's a great honor right there. That's a heavy job also. That's not a small job. That's a heavy job. You understand? Give me that in Genesis 9 verse 1. Genesis 9 verse 1. Uh -huh. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. He's talking about the righteous seed that came out of Noah. Read. And the fear, and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth uh -huh. and upon every fowl of the air Upon all that move with upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hand are they are they delivered. So what is Noah being told here? Read that part again. Read verse 2 again. Genesis chapter 9, verse 2. Uh -huh. And the fear of you. And the what? And the fear of you. The fear of you. The fear of you. I'll give an example. Hold this, give me to 12 20, verse 1. And the fear of you. And the dread of you. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently 
unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command this day, uh -huh. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all, above all nations of the earth. So now, watch this. The most that God is giving us here, listen, keep the laws, you will be set on high above all nations on earth. That's the condition. That's the stipulation. Keep my laws, I'll set you on high. Everybody understand that? Okay, now, jump down to verse 10. To the right, to the eight, verse 10. Come on. And all the people of the earth. And what? And all the people of the earth. And all the people of the earth. Shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. Meaning what? They're going to know that we're the Israelites. Read. And they shall be afraid of thee. They shall be what? And they shall be afraid of thee. The fear of us is going to be upon the nations if we apply verse 1. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 again. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Read. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, Read. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. You see that thing? Power in submission. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 25. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 25. Uh -huh. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee. The what? This day will I begin to put the dread of thee. Will I begin to put the dread of thee? Come on. And the fear of thee uh -huh. upon the nations that are under the whole heaven. Under the what? Under the whole heaven. Everyone and everything. The same dominion that was given to our forefather Noah, guess what? Fast forward into the future, it is what was promised to us. It is what is promised to us. You understand? But I'm using this as an example. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to come back and deal with this. Finish that verse. Who shall hear reports of thee uh -huh. and shall tremble? Read. Then shall what? And shall tremble. They're going to hear a report of us. What type of report is that? A good report. What is that report? The most that God is dealing with them now. Look at them. In order. That's what the nations are going to say. The nations are not going to... We listen, we're not going to be on the nation's lips in a good way if we're not doing this Bible. That's not going to happen. Understand that. The only way the nations are going to feel the way what they were reading here is if we do Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Read. Who shall hear reports of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. And be in anguish because of you. Because what will you be doing? Keeping God's commandments in the faith of Christ. Go back to where he was at now. Genesis 9 verse 2. Genesis chapter 9 verse 2. Uh -huh. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that moveth upon the earth. And upon what? And upon all that moveth upon the earth. That includes the people also. Upon what? Upon all that moveth upon the earth. Upon all that moveth upon the earth. Read. And upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Into your hands are they delivered. So the same power that was given to Adam was given to our forefather Noah. Why? Because Noah was a just man. He was righteous. He was obedient. He was submissive to the laws of God. That's why the Lord found grace in Noah. You understand? And because of Noah, that's why today we are alive. If it wasn't for Noah's righteousness, we wouldn't be here. Think about that. There's power in submission. The reason why we're standing today is because of what our forefather Noah did. He was disciplined in the laws of God. And he did that which was commanded of him. If it wasn't for that glorious forefather, we wouldn't be here. Understand it. So Noah was a heavy prophet. You understand? Watch this. Let's go to another forefather of ours. Okay? I'm giving examples so that you can see the power of submission. You understand? Give me the book of Genesis 12 and 1. Genesis 12 verse 1. Read. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, 
and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And unto a what? Unto a land that I will show thee. Mm. Hold this. Give the book of Isaiah. One second. Give me Isaiah 51 verse 2. Isaiah 51 verse 2. Isaiah 51 verse 2. Uh -huh. Look unto Abraham your father, unto, and unto Sarah, that bear you. Meaning our foremother, come on. For I called him alone. For I what? For I called him alone. For I called him alone. Read. And blessed him. Uh -huh. And increased him. You see that thing? So Abraham, our forefather, was called out of his family, just like you, just like all of us that are here. The most that God will call, not he, it's a miracle when he calls everybody. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but listen, it's odd, okay? But he will pick, he'll pick and choose who he wants out of that family and say, okay, I want that one right there, I want that one right there. The rest, mm -mm. you see that thing? That's how it moves. Okay? Go back to where was that? Genesis 12, verse 1 again. Genesis 12, verse 1. Read. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and to a land that I will show thee. And to a land that I will show you. You have to think about it. You have to have a lot of faith for you just to, you know what? Pick up and get the hell out. You pick up, you go. He said, you know what? It's fine now. I'm going. Our forefathers, they, they had a lot of faith. You understand? Sisters too, okay? They say, you know what? Get out. We don't want you here. But if you believe this Bible, guess what you're going to do? You're going to roll the branches. Okay? Next verse. Genesis 12, 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will what? And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will make of thee a great nation. Imagine, this is just you, one man. And you are being told, listen, leave your house, go to such and such, and I will make you a great nation. At that point, you are 99 years old. You're like, what the hell? You see, like I'm moving with a stick here. Like, what? But that's what he did. He obeyed. Okay? Ray. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. You see that thing? And thou shalt be a blessing. Genesis 17 now, verse 1. Genesis 17, verse 1. Read. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine. 99 years old, Abraham was. Come on. The Lord appeared to the Lord appeared to Abram. The Lord did what? The Lord appeared to Abram. The Lord appeared unto our forefather Abram. You understand? He was 99 years old when the Lord called him. Read. And said unto him, I am the Almighty God. I am the what? I am the Almighty God. That says the Lord right there. I am the Almighty God. All power, all might. Read. Walk before me. What did he say? Walk before me. This is what Abraham is being commanded. Walk before me. Read. Walk before me. And be thou perfect. The same thing we read about our forefather Noah. Noah was just. He was perfect. Abraham is commanded. Listen. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Give me that in Psalms 86 verse 11. Okay. Walk. Actually, you know what? Hmm. Give me Jeremiah 7.23 first. Let's start there. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 23. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 23. Read. But this thing commanded I did, saying, Obey my voice, uh -huh. and I will be your God. Read. And ye shall be my people. Come on. And walk ye in and, all, and what? And walk ye uh -huh. in all the ways that I have commanded you. You see that thing? And walk ye in all the ways, not some, all the ways. That means our forefather Noah, Abraham, Adam. They walked in all the ways that was commanded of them. Read. That it may be well unto you. That it may be well unto you. Walking in all the ways that I've commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 86 verse 11 now. Psalms 86 
verse 11. Come on. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Do what? Teach me thy way, O Lord. Let's keep daily. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Read. I will walk in thy truth. I will what? I will walk in thy truth. That's what, what, that is what was given to, that was what was commanded to our forefather Abraham. Walk before me. You understand? Walk in, thy, in my truth. That's what King David is saying right here. Verse 11 again. Psalms 86 verse 11. Read. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. To do what? To fear thy name. That means our forefather Abraham, he feared the Lord. That's why he didn't, he didn't have any excuses. He didn't say, oh, but I think I think. No. They said, they do it, he got it done. Be perfect, walk before me, and be thou perfect. He did it. He never questioned the Lord. No, but you know, you see, I'm, I'm 99 years old. I'm not going to be able to. Listen, he just did it. Why? Because our forefather Abraham, he feared the Lord. He feared the Lord. That's what, go back to Genesis 17. Verse 1 again. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. Read. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, uh -huh. the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. I am the what? I am the Almighty God. That's why he feared. I am the Almighty God. That's why the fear came upon him. You understand? He feared the Lord. And he understood who the Lord was. He understood that thing. Read. I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Read. And I will make that and I will make my covenant between me and thee. Uh -huh. And will multiply thee exceedingly. You see that thing? I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. Read. And Abraham and Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold. My covenant is with thee. My what? My covenant is with thee. My covenant is with thee. Read. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Thou shalt be a father of many nations. What is this covenant is making reference to? Give me. What covenant is the Lord making with Abraham? Give me that in Psalm 78. Might be verse 10. Yeah, read that. Psalms 78 verse 10 They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. Read that again, verse 10. Psalms 78 verse 10 They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. So the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham was the one. The law. What was that law? The covenant of circumcision. Read that again, verse 10. Psalms of the 78 verse 10. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. Uh -huh. Read verse 7. And, and forget his works. They did what? And forget his works. So when we go against the laws of God, that means we don't remember what the Lord did for us. So what is that called? Being ungrateful. Moving with the spirit of, I deserve this. Yes. Because that's what we're reading here. Read that again, verse 11. Psalms 78, verse 11. Come on. And forget his works. And did what? And forget his works. They forgot the works of the Lord, what he did for us against our enemies. Read. And his wonders that he had showed them. And his wonders which he showed them. So our forefather Abraham did not forget the works of the Lord that he did. When? When he delivered Noah, a preacher of righteousness. He didn't forget that. When you read the scriptures, you'll notice that our forefathers, they were very in tune with their history. They were in tune with their history. They were not simpletons. They understood their history. You understand? Go back. Genesis 17, Genesis chapter 17 and verse 4. Again. Genesis chapter 17 verse 4. Uh -huh. As we behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Come on. Neither shall Hold on. Jump out to verse 6. Genesis chapter 17, verse 6. Read. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. I will what? And I will make nations of thee. Remember, he's still, he's still talking about the covenant. He says, I'm going to multiply. Okay. Verse 6 again. One more time. 
Genesis chapter 17 verse 6. Right. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee. Right. And kings shall come out of thee. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. And kings shall come out of thee. I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will, mark, I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. Now, this is the promise. This promise is being given to Abraham. Why? Because he, he, what? he obeyed. The, remember Genesis 17 verse 1. It says, God, I'm the, I'm, he says, I'm the almighty God. Walk before me. That was the condition. Do this thing right here. And this is what I'm going to do for you, Abraham. You understand? Read verse 6 again. Genesis chapter 17. Verse 6. Rain. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Uh -huh. And I will make nations of thee. Rain. And kings shall come out of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. Rain. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. I will what? And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. So the most high God, he saw the spirit of our forefather Abraham. He saw that. That's why he was telling him what he was telling him. Listen. I'm going to make my covenant with you. So, you have to really think about really the level of grace that the Lord had upon Abraham, what he saw in him. He saw so much grace in him, guess what he said, listen, I'm going to make kings are going to come out of you, Abraham. You understand? Same thing he said with Noah. He said the same thing to Noah. You understand? What happened after, what happened, what, 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 the people that came out, out, out of Noah, Righteous seed, Shem, Afaxed, and so forth. Those are the people that the Lord was making reference to. Guess what? We are those people today. We are back. Okay? Verse 7 now. Again. Genesis chapter 17, verse 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. For an everlasting covenant. Come on. To be a God unto thee. To be a what? To be a God unto thee. That's why we keep saying the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what we're reading here. Read. And to the seed of the thee. And to the seed of Abraham that's going to come after me, after him. Read. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed of the thee. I will give unto thee, Abraham, and to thy seed after thee. Because of what? Because of what? Abraham was submissive. Abraham obeyed the most High God. He did that thing. You understand? The power in submission. Because of Abraham's obedience to the laws of God, that's why today we have what? The promises that was made to him. And to his seed after him. If it wasn't for Abraham's obedience, listen. Give me that in Luke chapter 1 real quick. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 71. Luke to the word of 71. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. Come on. And from the hand of all that hate us. Next verse. To perform. To what? To perform. To perform. Come on. The mercy promised to our fathers. Uh -huh. And to remember his holy covenant. We were just reading about that covenant right now in Genesis 17. Read. The oath. The what? The oath. The promise. Read. Which he swore to our father Abraham. You see that thing? The reason why verse 71 is so important is because of what Abraham did. Understand that. The power of submission. Because if it wasn't for Abraham when he was commanded, saying, Walk before me and be perfect, listen, this verse wasn't going to happen. That's why it says, because we read this all the time, by the way. You understand? All of this was because of what? What our forefather Abraham did. It wasn't because of nothing we did. It was because of what our forefather Abraham did. You understand? Go back to where was that? Genesis chapter 17, verse 8. Uh -huh. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed of thee the hand wherein the land wherein thou art a stranger. And all the all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be. And okay. I will, read verse eight again from the top. 
Genesis chapter 17, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. The land wherein thou art a stranger is going to tell you what that land is. Read. And all the land of Canaan. All the land of Canaan, come on. For an everlasting possession. For what? For an everlasting possession. Because what? That's where Jerusalem is. Read. And I will be their God. And I will be their God. I'm going to be the God of the seed that's going to come out of out thee. That's what he's saying. Read on, verse 9. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. In their what? In their generations. It says, Thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Now, give me Genesis 18, verse 18. Genesis 18, verse 18. Read. Right. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. A great and mighty nation. Read. Right. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Who is the nations of the earth that shall be blessed in Abraham? Because the nations of the earth that the Lord knows who is there. Give me Amos 3 and 1 and 2. Amos chapter 3 verse 1. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in Abraham. Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Uh -huh. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. O children of Israel, come on. O children of Israel, against the whole family. Against the what? Against the whole family. The whole family is the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the whole family. When he says the whole family, he's talking about the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Read. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, Read. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the families of the earth that will be blessed in Abraham is talking, talking about who? The 12 tribes. The whole family is the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, go back. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. See that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Read that again. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. See that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Read on. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. All the nations of the earth will be blessed in Abraham. Who's that? The whole family, the all twelve tribes. That is, that's what he's talking about. Read. For I know him. For I what? For I know him. He says, for he knows him. He knows Abraham. How does he know him? Because Abraham developed a reputation with the father. That's why Abraham was called a friend of the Lord. Abraham was called a friend of God. Because Abraham developed a reputation with the father. Just like our forefather Moses. He developed a reputation with the father. The Lord knew Moses by name. What does that mean? Reputation. You understand? Again, verse 19. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Because at this point, Abraham did not have children yet. But the Lord is telling him, is, is saying that Abraham is going to command his household and his children after him. How does the Lord know that? Because the Lord, he proved Abraham. When he says, walk before me and be thou perfect, he did it. He says, I'm going to change your name. No longer are you going to be Abraham, you're going to be Abraham, a father of many nations. He said, okay, he took the new name. He believed that thing. Okay, watch this. Give me Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Let's get some more on that. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Read. The heart is deceitful above all things. The heart is deceitful above all things. Come on. And desperately wicked. Read. Who can know it? Watch this. Let's turn. I the Lord search the heart. I the Lord do what? I, the Lord, search the heart. The Lord says he searches your mind. He searches what's in your mind. Read. I try the rain. Come on. Even to give every man according to his ways. Uh -huh. And according to the fruit of his doings. According to the fruit of his doings. 
So the most high God, he what? He understood, he knew what was in the mind of Abraham. Abraham wasn't double-minded. Abraham knew exactly what he wanted and he went for it. What was that? To please the Lord. He feared the most high God. He knew that, said, listen, I, don't, I may not know everything right now, but this is what I know. I fear the Lord. And guess what? I'm going to do what this Bible says. That is the spirit that all of you must have this day. Understand that. Go back to where he was at. You know what? Give me Genesis 18 verse 20. Genesis chapter 18 verse 20. The book of Genesis chapter 18 verse 20. Mm. Hold on. Let me see if I can actually go there. Okay, read it. Genesis chapter 18 verse 20. And the Lord said, Because the crime of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. So now, the Lord is speaking to Abraham. He's conversating with him. The same thing he did with Noah. Remember now, think about it. The Lord said that the Lord spoke to our forefather Noah. He said, listen, this is what I'm going to do to this wretched place. So, the, uh, the Mosai is doing the same thing with our forefather Abraham here. He's discussing the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah. You see that thing? Read. And today, guess where we are? We're in spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah. We are under the United States. The U.S. is ruling everybody. You understand? Even our government symbol in South Africa is got the symbol of the eagle. Guess what? We are dancing to their tree. Understand that? Read that again, verse 20. Genesis 18, verse 20. And the Lord said, Because the crime of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, because their sin is very grievous, come on, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, Read. which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. So now the Lord is discussing plans with Abraham on what he's going to do. Guess what? When you read now, what now that you are coming into this truth, guess what the Lord is doing with you? He's doing the same thing. Either you're going to look at that as something glorious, which it is, or you're going to be the demon that you was in the world and go back to their demonic behavior. It's up to you. The choice is yours. You understand? Read that part again. Genesis 18, verse 3. Read. Verse 21. Uh -huh. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is, come unto me, and if not, I will know. Rain. And the men turned their faces from that and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Abraham did what? And But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Abraham was bold enough to stand. He said, you know what? I'm going to stand before the Lord. He was bold enough. If you read the book of Ezra, Ezra is going back and forth with the angel, asking him a lot of questions. Things that he's not even supposed to be asking. The Lord was like, listen, you have gone too far into this world. You better check yourself. Because he started asking questions so, so much so, the Lord was like, you know what? Answer me these three things. One of the things he asked him, he said, weigh me the weight of fire. If you give me the weight of fire, I'm going to give you the answers. You understand? Give me the image of a voice. Bring back yesterday, he asked him. He could not. He said, you cannot ask, ask, ask me for the things that exist in your world, but you want to know the ways of the Lord? You see what I was saying? Because he was going too far. But the reason why he was doing that, he was doing it because he was what? He was about his people. That's why the Lord was able to give him the answers. He was not asking because he wanted to be this, this wisdom, this wise prophet. No. He asked so he can teach his people. That is the reason why he was asking the questions. It was not because of vain, glorious faith. No. He did it because he wanted to teach his people. So likewise, you brothers, you better understand. You are here to learn. Your job is to teach others. That's why you are being taught now. Understand that? Yes, sir. All praises. Read that again. Genesis chapter 18, verse 22. And the men turned their faces from death and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Read. And Abraham drew near. He did what? He drew near. He drew near even. He stood and he drew near. Okay, come on. And said, 
Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? You see what he's asking? He drew near, he said, draw near unto me, and I will draw near unto you. That's what the scripture says. Read. So now he's asking the Father, will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? He is asking, read. Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city, will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? You see that thing? It says, he's starting with fifty. It says, if there's fifty righteous, are you going to destroy the, the whole city? You understand? If there's fifty righteous, are you going to destroy the whole city because there's fifty righteous men and all women? Come on. That before from, from thee to do after this man, Ray. to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that before from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right. He says, will not the judge of the earth do right because the Lord is the judge of the earth. So he's negotiating with, our, with, with the most high. That's what's going on here. He is negotiating. So you have to understand the manner in which Abraham walked before the Lord for the most high God to feel comfortable to sit with Abraham and discuss what he's going to do. So what is Abraham doing here? He's pleading the cause of the people. He's pleading the cause. What are we doing right now? The same thing. We are pleading the we are pacifying the wrath of the Lord's anger. That's what we're doing. We are pacifying the wrath of the Lord's anger. We are pleading the cause of the people when we go out there to the streets. When we are up in here. You understand? That's what we're doing. Read. And the Lord said, If I find a sort of fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. You see what he's saying? If I find fifty righteous in Sodom, he says, I'm gonna spare. I'm gonna spare all the place for their sakes. Read. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Meaning what? I'm nothing. That's what he's saying. Read. Peradventure, they shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Meaning what? Five of the fifty out of the five, meaning what? Forty-five. If there's forty-five righteous, are you still going to destroy the city? He's asking. Read. Will thou destroy all the city for the lack of five? Come and on. He, and he said, if I find forty and five, I will not destroy it. You see that thing? If I find forty and five, I will not destroy it. Read. And he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. Read. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. Because now he's pushing it. Okay? He's pushing it. That's why he says, Oh Lord, let not the Lord be angry. He's pushing the issue. Okay? Read. And I will speak. Peradventure they shall be thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Come on. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Read. Peradventure they shall be twenty found there. Uh -huh. Now he's battering the Lord. You yes, understand? That's why he said, he says what? And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Meaning what? Not that I'm, I'm overstepping my bounds. That's what he's saying. Read. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty sake. Now he's, he's down to twenty now. Read. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. You see that thing? Because he knows what he's doing is pushing it. But the Lord is from praising Abraham so much so he said, Listen, I'm going to let this ride. Okay, come on. And I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure, ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy for ten sake. Read. And the Lord went his way. And he did what? And the Lord went his way. Before he can go to the to the smaller number than ten. He says, you know what? Let me let me go now. Okay, come on. As soon as he had left communing with Abraham. Stop right there. As soon as what? As soon as he had left communing with Abraham. To commune means to communicate. He had a conversation with the Lord. You understand? They had a deep conversation about what's going to happen. The judgment that's coming. The same thing that the Lord did with our forefather Abraham. He did with our forefather uh, Noah. He did with our forefather uh, Adam. He's doing it with us, with us today. 
regarding the fate of the sons of God and what the fate of everyone else that are oppressing the sons of God. I hope you brothers understand the heaviness of what, what, what's coming out. Because you need to understand that if you don't submit to this Bible, you're not going to have power to rule nothing. You're not going to have no power to rule nothing. Okay? Read. And Abraham returned unto his place. Read that again, verse 33. The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 33. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Now Abraham returned unto his place. Watch this. Give me, um, hmm. let me give an example of that, actually. What, what we just read from Genesis 18, verse 20 to verse 33. Give me Numbers 12, verse 7. Numbers chapter 12. This is what the Lord said. Numbers 12, verse 7. Numbers chapter 12 verse 7. Come on. My servant Moses is not so. My servant Moses is not so. Read. Who is faithful in all my house. Come on. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. Will I what? With him will I speak mouth to mouth. He's checking Miriam because Miriam was out of order here. Read that again. The book of Numbers chapter 12 verse 8. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. With Moses will I speak mouth to mouth. Come on. Even apparently. Uh -huh. And not in dark speeches. And not in dark speeches, meaning what? I'm going to speak plain to him. The same way you see the conversation going back and forth with, the, with Abraham and the Lord. That's what the Lord is saying here regarding Moses. Read. Really. And the similitude of the Lord shall, shall he behold. He's going to behold the similitude of the Lord. He says what? Meaning what? He's going to see the glory of the Lord. That's what he's saying. Read. Shall he behold? Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? You see that thing? Were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Because a lot of the times, right, as a people, we like to gossip. Gossip is our thing. You see that thing? You see the sisters are laughing on that side? Gossip is our thing. Guess what? Brothers do it too. Don't get it twisted. Brothers do it too. They gossip. Okay? So what does that mean? Women spirit. Jezebels. We men Jezebels. Not women Jezebels. Men Jezebels. Okay? So what we are seeing here is that Moses, what he did, he had married an Egyptian woman. Aaron spoke to Moses. What Aaron was doing, speaking to Miriam, the Lord didn't check, didn't check Aaron. Aaron wasn't out of oil. Miriam was. Because it was, a, it was not her place to speak against the prophet Moses. Moses was a prophet. So when you think you can speak evil of leadership, listen, you're not going to get the kingdom. I'm telling you right now, sisters, if you are gossiping, you know what? I had that Negro right there. You're going to die when the Lord returns. You better check that spirit. Okay, because what happened to Miriam? She was turned into a white woman. She was, she was, mm, she was, guess what? Miriam was Kanimba without the bleach before she was checked. After, Mi when Miriam was checked, she became Kanimba with the bleach. Make sense? Okay, watch this. Give me Sirach 44, verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 44 verse 19. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 44 verse 19. Read. Abraham was a great father of many people. That, that, that's talking about the 12 tribes. Read. In glory was there none like unto him. In glory was there none like unto him. Because Abraham was able to negotiate with the father to please the cause of the, cause of the righteous. You understand? Read. Who kept the law of the Most High. What did he do? Who kept the law of the Most High. Abraham kept the law of the Most High God. Read. Who kept the law of the Most High and was in covenant with him. And was in what? And was in covenant with him. He was in agreement with the Lord. The Lord was in agreement with him. Read that again. 
Ecclesiastes 24, verse 20. Uh -huh. Who kept the law of the Most High? Who kept the law of the Most High? And was in covenant with him? And was in covenant with him. Read. He established the covenant in his flesh. He did what? He established the covenant in his flesh. That's twofold. He's talking about what? Circumcision of his penis and his seed after him. Read. And when he was proved. When he was what? And when he was proved. And when Abraham was proved, guess what? He was found faithful. He was found faithful. Let's read about that thing. Genesis 22 verse 1. When he was proved, he was found faithful. Genesis 22 verse 1. What I want to show, what I'm showing you is the power of submission. The reason why we are able to do what we were able to do today is because of the promise that the Lord made to Abraham and the faith that Abraham had and the obedience that Abraham had. That's the reason why we're able to go to the stage corners today and teach. That's why we're given the, the, the grace period. You understand? When Christ died, that was fulfillment of what? The promise that he made to Abraham. That was the fulfillment of that prophecy. The grace we have today is because of our forefathers that came before us. No. Abraham. Adam. You understand? When he was in his right mind. Read that. Genesis 22 verse 1. Genesis 22 verse 1. Read. And it came to pass of these things uh -huh. that God did tempt Abraham. He did what? Did tempt Abraham. Because somebody might say, okay, God did tempt, so that God tempted you to do sin, which means if I'm doing sin, the Lord is the one that is making me do it. Read it again. The book of Genesis 22 verse 1. And it came to pass of these things that God did tempt Abraham and said, and said unto him, Read. Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Because you need to think, you need to understand the mind, the mind of the Negro. Negro always finding loopholes. We read that, he's going to say, Oh, that means God is the one who's tempting me to do that. That means I guess I can do it. Let's see if he's really the Lord, if he's really God. Jump down to verse 11. The book of Genesis, chapter 20. Chapter 22, verse 11. I'm just going on a tangent. One second. And the angel of the Lord. And the what? And the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord. Called unto him out of heaven. You see that thing? So it wasn't the Lord that was tempting. It wasn't God that was tempting Abraham. Abraham was communing with whom? Was he communing with the whole son? No. Read that again. Genesis chapter 22, verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Watch this. Because the same thing that Abraham is doing right here is the same thing that Ezra, Ezra did. Give me a second, Ezra chapter 7 verse 1. Watch this. This is Uriel, the angel that was sent to commune with Ezra. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 1. We're going to read to verse 3. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 1. Read. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel. There was what? There was sent unto me the angel. There was sent unto me the angel, come on. Which had been sent unto me the night before. Read. The night are four. Read. The night are four. Come on. And he said unto me, Read. Up, Estrus, mm -hmm. and hear the words that I have come to tell thee. Come on. And I said, Speak on, my God. What did he say? And I said, speak on, my God. He's speaking to the angel. Why? You see what he said? Speak on, my God. Speak on, my God. Same thing we're reading in Genesis 22. So that will clarify that thing. Go back to Genesis 22 now. Verse 1 again. Genesis 22, verse 1. Read. And it came to pass for these things that God contained did tempt Abraham uh, and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Come on. And he said, Take now thy son, mm -hmm. thy only son, thy Isaac, what? thy only son, Isaac. Remember now, thy only son, Isaac. So he's completely ignoring who? Ishmael. He's completely ignoring Ishmael out of this equation. Read. And he said, Take now thy son. Thy only son Isaac, Ray. whom thou lovest, whom thou what? Whom thou lovest. Come on. And get thee into the land 
of Moriah, Moria, and, and get thee into the land of Moria and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. So now Abraham is being proved now. He said, Take your only son, go and sacrifice him. Sacrifice your son. You understand that the only son that you love, go and sacrifice him. Watch this. Give me Matthew 10 37. Actually, you know what? Let's jump down. I'm not going to go there yet. Okay, jump down to verse 6. Genesis chapter 22, verse 6. Wait. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they were both of them together. Verse 6 again. Genesis chapter 22, verse 6. And Abraham took the wood, took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. He laid it upon Isaac his son. He is preparing a, sac a sacrifice, a burnt offering, as the Lord commanded him in verse 2. Read. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. Jump down. Let me see. Let me see. Jump down to verse 9. Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. And they came to the place which God had told him. Which of. is which is Moria. Come on. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Now he's getting ready to sacrifice his only son according to what? What the, what, what the, the, what the Lord commanded him. You understand? Read on. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. To do what? To slay his son. Read that again, verse 10. Genesis 22, verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife and took the knife to slay his son. Now watch this. Go back up to verse 2. Something I want out of that verse. Genesis 22, verse 2. Read. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Whom thou what? Whom thou lovest. Whom thou what? Whom thou lovest. Jump down to verse 10. Genesis 22, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Stop right there. Watch this. Give me Matthew 10, verse 7 now. Matthew 10, verse 37. It says, Take thy, take thy son, whom thou lovest. Uh huh. Read that. Matthew 10, 37. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. Come on. He that loveth the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Read that again. Matthew 10, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Watch this. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You see that thing right there? That's where it comes from. That's why the Lord said what he said. He, if you love your son more than the Lord, you are not worthy of me. So, will the Lord tell you to sacrifice your son today or your daughter? No. But guess what he will What he will do? Some of you, you're going to get children. Not some. You're going to get children someday. Okay? Some of you already have. Okay? Your son or your daughter, you're going to teach them the laws of God. They're going to grow up in these commandments. One day they're going to say, you know what, Father? To hell with this book. The question is, are you going to be begging your child? No, no, to hell with you. The Lord will give me another one. Children are casualties of war. You better understand that. Let me say that again. Children are casualties of war. Let me say that again in case I start. Children are casualties of war. So imagine you have a, you have a son. He is the devil the Bible speaks of. And you are in the truth. And guess what? He's terrorizing you. You understand? You are protecting him. Before you know it, no, he's my son. I love him. So on and so forth. Guess what happens next? He ends up pulling you out this truth. You get distracted by his wickedness. He doesn't want to hear this Bible. Let the world deal with him. Because our, our, our sons and our daughters, when they get killed, guess what happens? It's because... They don't want to bow down to this. And now guess, guess who guess who punishes them now? Because if they don't want to be corrected, 
Guess, guess who punishes them? The police does it. The gang member does it. The pimp does it. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. You understand? Let's go back. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis 22, verse 10. Read them. Genesis 22, verse 10. Uh -huh. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And took the knife to slay his son. Because Abraham, he believed the father. Wholehearted, there was no, he, he did not, he was not double minded at all. He came before the father with a single mind. He loved the father and whatever, because imagine this, right? Because we gonna we I might read the, the reasoning of Abraham why he, why why he why why he did what he did because he said you know what because he where, where is that by the way let me see hmm. hold on wait 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 let me see hmm. one second. Could you read verse 13? Genesis 22, 13. Genesis 22, verse 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and, of, and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Okay. Oh, I understand now. So, think about this thing. What was commanded to Abraham? What was the oath that the Lord made with him? What was the oath? Speak loud, speak loud. Stand up, speak loud. What was his oath? What was, what was, the, what was the oath? That the most high made with Abraham. What did he say? Make him a great nation. Uh -huh. And then what he will do to his, to his seed after him? Change You see that thing right there? So Abraham remembered the oath. He remembered the oath that the Lord made with him. So there was no problem when he said, listen, go sacrifice your only son which you love. Why? Because he believed the father. Guess what? It's written already. You're going to get the kingdom. You decide, you know what? I think I want to go back. So do you believe in this book? You know? No. You're not listening. You're not paying attention. Okay? Okay, go back to where was that? Let me move on here. I'm not going to go on a tangent. Genesis 22, read verse 11 now. What? Genesis 22, verse 11. Come on. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, uh -huh. Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Read. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know. For what? For now I know. For now I know that thou fearest God. <laughs> That's some heavy stuff right there. Heavy stuff. It says, Now I know that you fear the Lord. Read that part again. Genesis 22, verse 12. Come on. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the land, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Read. See, thou hast. Not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. You see that thing right there? That's some heavy stuff right there. You have to ask yourself if you will do that. The Lord is not going to ask you to do that today. But think about it. It can come in different ways. You better understand this, what we're reading here. You brother understand that? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right. Give me, hmm, let me see if I want to go there. Okay, give me Sarah 44, 21. Let's go back. Because remember, give me Sarah 44. Ecclesiastes chapter 44. Let me see, let me see. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 44. Read verse, read verse 19 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 19. Uh -huh. And Abraham was a great father of many people. Read. In glory was there none like unto him. Come on. Who kept the law of the Most High. What did Abraham do? Who kept the law of the Most High. He kept the law of the Most High. Come on. 
who kept the law of the Most High and was in covenant with him. He established the covenant in his flesh, and when he was proved, when he was what? And when he was proved, when he was commanded to what? To, to sacrifice his only son. Guess what? He did it. He went to go and do it until the angel said, Stop. Now I know. Now I know that you fear the Lord. Really. And was he was found faithful. He was found faithful. He was found faithful. Let's get the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Read them. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Come on. Actually, you know what? The, book, the Apostle Paul, he explains the reason why Abraham did it. Read. That, what, you, what, what you answered, that was correct. Let's get some more of that. Read. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Uh -huh. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had not received the promises offered up by his only begotten son. Okay, read verse 17 again. Hebrews 11 verse 17. Read. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. He did what? Offered up Isaac. He offered up, he offered up Isaac, his only son. Read. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. He, had, he received the promises. Because of what? His obedience. You see how heavy that thing is? He, 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 he received the promises because of what? He was obedient to the laws of God. Read. Verse 18. Of who, of who it was said, uh -huh. that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. The seed of God will come through Isaac. Come on. Accounting. Accounting. This is the reasoning behind what he did. Come on. That God was able to raise him up. You see that thing? He said the Lord is going to bring him back from the dead. That's what, that, that's what his, that was his reasoning behind this. Because he believed the Lord that much. Okay? Read. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From whence also he received him in a figure. You see that thing? That's some heavy stuff right there. Heavy, heavy stuff. Verse, read verse 19 again. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 19 Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure hmm. Watch this Give me 1 Peter 2 1 Peter Hold on 1 Peter 3 No, 1 Peter 3 to 1 First Peter chapter three verse twenty one. The like figure. The what? The like figure. The like figure. Come on. We are unto even baptism doth also now save us. This is going into baptism. Come on. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the altar of a good conscience toward God. Read. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. By the what? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Guess what? Our forefather Abraham, he understood the resurrection of Christ. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's some heavy stuff. Go back. Hebrews 11 verse 19. Uh -huh. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. He did what? He received him in a figure. So... Abraham is talking about resurrection here. You don't read anything about from the time of Adam up to this point when somebody was resurrected from the dead. So how did our forefather Abraham know about this? Think about that thing. That's some heavy stuff. Read it again. Hebrews 11 verse 19. Uh -huh. Accounting that God was able to... Meaning what? Meaning what? When he says the light figure, he's saying, what he's saying is this. The same way the, the Lord is going to be resurrected in the future, my son also will be resurrected. Heavy stuff. You see that thing? That's why Isaac was even called, you are thy only begotten son. Another topic, okay? Give me, go back to Sarah now, 44. Ecclesiastes chapter 44. 
Read verse 20 again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 44 verse 20. The same way he is going to be resurrected in the future. Meaning Christ. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, come on. Who kept the law of the Most High? Who kept the law of the Most High? And was in covenant with him. And was what? And was in covenant with him. Read. He established the covenant in his flesh. Come on. And when he was proved, he was found faithful. You see our forefather Abraham? He is one of my favorite forefathers. Our forefather Abraham. Oof. He was a mighty prophet. Don't get it twisted. Watch this. Now, give me. Read verse 22. Uh, Sarah 44. Sarah 44, verse 22. Ecclesiastes 44, verse 22. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Read verse 21 for me. Ecclesiastes 44, verse 21. Read. Therefore, he assured him by an oath. He assured him by an oath, what we read in Genesis. That he would bless the nations in the sea. He would bless the nations in the sea. And that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth. Read. And exalt his seed as the stars. Come on. And cause them to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the utmost parts of the land. That's Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21 down about the kingdom of heaven. Read. With Isaac. With what? With who? With Isaac. With Isaac. The same covenant he made with Abraham is he is also he made he made it with Isaac also. Read. With Isaac did he establish likewise. Likewise. The same covenant he made with Abraham, he made likewise with our forefather Isaac. For Abraham his father's sake. For Abraham his father's sake. You see the reason why he made a covenant with Isaac? It wasn't because of Isaac. It was because of Abraham. For Abraham his father's sake. You see that thing? Read. Come on. Ecclesiastes 44, verse 21. 22. Verse 22. With Isaac did he establish likewise, for Abraham is for the sake, the blessing of all men and the covenant. The blessing of all men and the covenant. Watch this. Give me Genesis 17, verse 15. Genesis chapter 17, verse 15. Genesis 17, verse 15. Come on. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, the wife, as for Sarai thy wife, mm -hmm. thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. Now, our foremother's name is being changed now to Sarah. From Sarai to Sarah. Read. And I will bless her. I will bless her. And give thee a son also of her. Read. Yea, I will bless her. And she shall be a mother of nations. Read. Kings of people shall be of her. The same thing that was told to Abraham. The same thing that is told to Sarah. Read. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. And did what? And laughed. He laughed. Because guess what? Why did he laugh? He was 99 years old. Could you imagine a 99 year old man? And he's supposed to take because remember now, hold on. Give me Genesis 18 real quick. Let me show you why he laughed. Okay. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 11. Genesis. This, this is now the angels that came to visit Abraham regarding the son that is going to be born of him. Read. Genesis chapter 18 verse 11. Now Abraham and Sarah were old. You know what? Start at verse 10. Genesis 18 verse 10. Read. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. Come on. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. You see that thing? Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Read. This is a promise now. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old. Were what? We're old. We're old, come on. And well stricken and in age. And well stricken in age. They were old. 99 year old. You understand? Abraham was 100 years old when he had Isaac. 100. Read. And well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the man of woman. Read that part again. And it what? 
and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Who can explain that? Stand up. The hell is this? It means that uh, there was no more desire to be with her, to lie with her. Yeah, so they, they were no longer having sex. Yes, sir. You see that thing? They were no longer having sex. That's how old they were. You understand? The man wasn't getting up downstairs. No more. Guess what? This is the promise. That's why Abraham loved to look. What? Me? Look at her. Listen. I've got arthritis on my back. What you talking about? I'm going to have a son. Okay? Read that again, verse 11. Genesis 18, verse 11. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. Read. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the men of women. After the men of women. So that's why he laughed. Genesis 17. Genesis 17, verse 17. And Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? You see that thing? Read. And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? Sarah was ninety, Abraham was a hundred. Read. And Abraham said unto God, That Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, No, no, jump down to verse 21. Genesis chapter 17, verse 21. Read. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. My covenant will I establish with Isaac. Read on. Which Sarah shall bear unto thee at the set time in the next year. Go back to Sarah 44 now. Sarah 44, verse 22. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 22. With Isaac did he establish likewise. For with Isaac did he establish likewise. For Abraham is for the sake Read. the blessing of all men. The what? The blessing of all men. The blessing of all men. Read. And the covenant. And the covenant. Watch this. Now. Read verse 23. Ecclesiastes 44, verse 23. So now, just to understand, we dealt with Adam, we dealt with Noah, while we dealt with Abraham, we dealt with Isaac. Now we're going to deal with whom? Jacob. Okay? So what you want to understand is that you, under, you, re, you see the patterns of why these men were great men. They were obedient men. They loved the Father. They applied what is written in this book. They applied what was written in this Bible. Verse 23. Ecclesiastes 44, verse 23. Uh -huh. And made it rest upon the head of Jacob. And made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him in his blessing. Uh -huh. And gave him an heritage. And divided his portions among the twelve tribes did he pass them. So the blessing that Abraham got, Isaac got. The blessing that Isaac got, the, 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 the sons of Jacob got. So today we're only here because of the amazing that was promised to Abraham. Abraham was a heavy, heavy, heavy forefather. You understand? He was so he was found so righteous that the Lord said, you know what? The whole earth, meaning what? The 12 tribes of Israel, they are gonna rule the earth. And I'm gonna send my son, the Christ, to do what? To give him a chance to get the kingdom. Abraham understood Christ. That's heavy. That is some heavy stuff. Okay? Read that part again, verse 23. Ecclesiastes 44, verse 23. Read. And made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him an inheritance and divided his portions among the twelve tribes to be part of it. Watch this. Give me what's there, 12 and 10. Because what we just read here, it says, um, he made it rest upon the head of Jacob. Hosea 12 and 10. Read that. Hosea 12 and 10. Uh -huh. I have also spoken by the prophets. I did what? I have also spoken by the prophets. I have also spoken by the prophets. And I have multiplied visions. I have multiplied visions. And used similitudes. And what? And used similitudes. Parables. Read. By the ministry. Of the prophets. Go back to Sarah 44, 23 again. 
Ecclesiastes 44, verse 23, and made it rest upon the head of Jacob, he acknowledged him in his blessing. He did what? He acknowledged him in his blessing. Come on. And gave him an heritage and divided his portions among the twelve tribes to depart there. He says he made it rest upon the head of Jacob. Let's go into that thing. Give me that in Genesis 25. Genesis 25, 25. He says he made it rest upon the head of Jacob. Genesis 25, 25. We're going to get to the point. Genesis 25, 25. Read. And the first came a rib all over like in hairy garments. And they called his name Esau. Come on. And after that came his brother out. So came the, Jacob was born, was the second born to Isaac. Read. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And what? And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Come on. And his name was called Jacob. Uh -huh. And Isaac was three score years old when she when when she bared him. When our foremother Rebecca bared the children. That's what it means. Read that again. Uh, Genesis to the twenty-five to six. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Isaac. And no. Isaac. Hold on. Could you read verse 26 again? The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Uh -huh. And his name was called Jacob. His name was called Jacob. Come on. And Isaac was three score years old when she paid them. Now watch this. Give me that in second Ezra chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Because the birth of Jacob and Esau was a similitude, was a parable. Okay? The birth of Jacob and Esau was a parable. Watch this. Second Ezra 6, verse 7 through 9. Second Ezra 6, verse 7. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the time? The end of the age he's talking about. Come on. Or oh, when shall be the end of the first uh -huh. and the beginning of it that followeth? The beginning of it that what? The beginning of it that followeth. The beginning of it that followeth. Read that part again, verse 7. The book of Second Esther, chapter 6, verse 7. Then unto thy day, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? Uh -huh. Or oh, when shall be the end of the first? When shall be the what? Oh, when shall be the end of the first? When shall be the end of the first? Come on. And the beginning of it that followeth. Read. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born. When Jacob and Esau was born, read. When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Come on. For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So the birth of Jacob and Esau was representing what? It was representing that Esau would be the last ruling Gentile power in the last days. And when Esau is destroyed, Esau's kingdom is destroyed, Jacob will be the one that is going to be ruling all nations forever. Now, jump back up to verse 7. Sickness chapter 6 verse 7. Then unto I and say. What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Mm -hmm. Or when shall be the end of the first? Stop. When shall be the what? Or when shall be the end of the first? The end of the first. Go back to Genesis 25, verse 25. Genesis 25, verse 25. And the first came out red. The what? And the first came out red. The first will be the last. You understand? The first, this first, the first will be the end in Second Ezra six verse seven. Anybody get that? Yes, sir. Okay, read that part again. Genesis twenty-five, verse twenty-five. And the first came on red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So now, what? Go back to Second Ezra six verse seven again. Second Ezra chapter six verse seven. Then unto I and say, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? What shall be the parting asunder of the times in the end of the age? Read. Right. Or when shall be the end of the first? The end. So the first is the end. The first boy that came out red represent the end of days. You understand? Read. Right. 
and the beginning of it that follows. The beginning of it that follows. The one that follows will be the beginning of a new age. Rulership of empires forever. Who's, who, who, which is who? Jacob. Us. Okay? Now, give me the book of Genesis 32, verse 25. Because the way Jacob and Esau was born was representing the end of Esau's age and the beginning of Jacob's rulership, which is forever. Genesis 32, verse 25. The book of Genesis chapter 32, verse 25. Come on. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. This is when Jacob was fighting with the angel, was wrestling with him. Read. He touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. Read. And, he, and as he wrestled with him, he dislocated his knee. Come on. And he said, Let me go for this for the day break. And he said, I will not let thee go. Except thou bless me. Verse 26 again. Genesis 32, verse 26. And he said, Let me go, for the day break. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. He says, I'm not going to let you go until thou bless me. I'm not going to leave this truth until the Lord returns. That's the mindset. I'm not leaving this truth until the Lord returns. Or I drop dead in this truth. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Read again verse 26. Genesis 32 verse 26. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go. I will not what? I will not let thee go. I will not let thee go. Come on. Except thou bless me. Except thou bless me. Give me Sarah 2 and 1. He says, I'm not going to let you go until thou bless me. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. Uh -huh. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So that is talking about all of us this day. If you come to serve the most high God, you must do what? Prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare your soul. Your soul. Because your soul is on the line. So you must prepare your soul. How do you do that? You apply what is written. You apply, you fight. That's how you prepare your soul. You understand? That's why they'll tell you, the people that, um, if you watch these uh, documentaries about the snipers, because for the military to go into a, a, a country, to go and bring, wage war against that country, guess who goes first? The spies. The spies, they're the ones that go out first to make sure what? They blend in with the locals. You understand? They blend in with the locals, they learn the language, the, you know, the culture and all of that. They, they can be there for deep, under deep, deep cover for three, four years. When it's time for them to strike, guess what they do? First, no, no, first goes the spy, then the sniper. If the sniper don't succeed, then the military. But the spy goes first. That's what the spies, then the sniper goes. The, spy, the sniper, his job is just to go there and aim and shoot. But 99.9% .9 of the job is done by whom? The spy. Understand that, meaning what? Preparation is key. Prepare your soul for temptation. You understand? Okay. Verse 1 again. Ecclesiastes 2, verse 1. Come on. My son. If thou come to serve the Lord, if you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare thy soul for temptation. Read. Set meaning, thy, meaning what? Meaning prepare yourself for trials. Read. Set thy heart aright. Get your mind right. And constantly endure. And do what? And constantly endure. That's what Jacob was doing with the angel. Constantly enduring, holding on. Even when his knee was dislocated, he was still holding himself. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. In pain. So guess what? We must labor in pain and not let go. Just like our forefather Jacob did. You understand? Read. And constantly endure. And make not haste in time of trouble. And not what? And make not haste in time of trouble. Don't run in times of trouble. Don't leave this truth because you, there's a problem. All of us are going to go through trials. 
You better hold on. You better talk to somebody. You better hold on in this book. You understand? Read. Cleave unto him. Do what? Cleave unto him. What did Jacob do? He was cleaving unto the angel. He said, I'm not going to let you go. Read. Cleave unto him and depart not away. And depart not away. Come on. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. At thy last end when the Lord returns. You better do that thing. Because at the end, you're going you're gonna to be the one that is laughing. You understand? You suffer now, discipline now, reward later. You discipline your spirit now, you get rewarded later with the kingdom. Is that simple? You understand? Okay. Go back. Genesis 32, verse 26. Genesis 32, verse 26. Come on. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go Read. except thou bless me. He says, I'm not gonna let you go except you bless me. Read. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be no more. No, Jacob. no. You are rushing the verse. Verse 28 again. Genesis chapter 32, verse 8. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Your name shall be called no more Jacob. Read. But Israel. But who? But Israel. Read. For as a prince hast thou power with God uh -huh. and with men and hast prevailed. You're not writing notes. The hell is this? Read that again. The book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 27, verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God uh -huh. and with men and has prevailed. You see that thing? For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. You see that thing? So the name Islam means what? Power with God. Jacob wrestled with the angel and he prevailed. So when you go against what is written and you get upset, that means what? That means the power that you have with the Lord, you deciding, you know what? I'm going to cut this off. That's what you are doing. You are basically rejecting power to rule all nations on earth. Because it takes, some, it takes obedience to endure. Let me say that again. It takes obedience to endure. You're not going to endure if you're not obedient to this Bible. Because to, for you to be obedient to this Bible, you got to do what? You got to apply. You got to humble down and do what it says. Then you're going to have the spirit of endurance. You are not going to have the spirit of endurance if you are double minded. Because your mind is not focused on this. Your mind is one foot in and one foot out. So for you to endure, you need to be obedient to what is written. And when you do that, guess what? The Lord will give you the spirit, will bless you with the spirit of endurance. Understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, watch this. Give me Genesis 35 verse 9. Genesis 35 verse 9. Now remember, it says, For thou hast what? It says, um, as, a, for, as a prince has thou power with God. Because this, what we read right here, is you you being able to enjoy. And the only way enjoy is because of what? Because you don't just enjoy out of nothing. What is the thing that is driving you to enjoy? The kingdom. How do you get the kingdom? You keep the commandments. So you're not gonna get the kingdom if you don't keep you're not gonna get the kingdom if you don't keep the commandments. Because for you to get the kingdom you need to humble down Submit yourself to the word of God. Then the Lord will give you the spirit to endure until the end. Either until you die in this truth or until the Lord returns. Either way, it's a win-win. Either you die in this truth, that's a big win, by the way. <laughs> you understand? You die doing the work of the Lord because the dead in Christ will rise first. You will be part of the first resurrection. And those that are part of the first resurrection, whew, those are glorious, those are glorious spirits right there. You understand that? 
So, watch this. Give me Genesis 35 verse 9. Read that. The book of Genesis 35 verse 9. Uh -huh. Now, now we're dealing with Jacob. We're still dealing with Jacob. Come on. And God appeared unto Jacob again. Again, because the first time was when? We just read in Genesis 32. Come on. When he came out of Padan Aram. Rain. And blessed him. And did what? And blessed him. Rain. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Uh -huh. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. He called his name Prince of the Power. Come on. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Notice what, what is being said here. You notice anything about this verse? What we just read so far. Where did we read as something similar? I want to see who's thinking. If you have an answer, stand up, exalt your voice, answer the question. Come on, brothers. You know, you know the sisters are looking. <laughs> the hell is this? Gandhi, what's the question? What's the answer? Uh, God Almighty was sent unto Father Abraham. Father Abraham, that's correct. Don't praise to the most high God for that thing. Okay? He said the same thing to Abraham. He says, Walk before I'm God Almighty. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Read that again. Genesis 35 verse 11. Genesis 35 verse 11. Uh -huh. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Read. Be fruitful and multiply. Read. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. Uh -huh. And kings shall come of thee. The same thing that we read in Genesis 17 is what we are reading here. And kings shall come out of thy loins. Which kings came out of Jacob's loins? The twelve tribes of Israel. That's us this day. Read. And the land which I gave Abraham. The land which I did what? And the land which I gave Abraham. The land which I gave Abraham. Come on. And Isaac. And Isaac. To thee will I give it. To thee will I give it. Come on. And to thy seed after thee uh -huh. will I give the land. Now remember what we read in Sarah 24. He says, with Isaac did he establish likewise for his father Abraham's sake. So the blessing we got is because of the grace that the Lord had. That is the grace that the Lord saw in our forefather Abraham. That he saw in Noah. That he saw in Adam and saw fit to make Adam the first man on the earth and give him the power of God on earth. Because of what? Submission. Obedience to the laws of God. To humble down to what this Bible says. So when it says black power, mm -mm. black power, if you talk about black power, the Bible. The only power that we're going to have on this earth is through this book. You cannot jump up a fence to get to the power that you think you want. Meaning what? You're not going to get it through Christianity. That's my fence I'm talking about. You're not going to get it through politics. You're not going to get it through Jehovah's wickedness. You are not going to get it none of the religions or none of the politics. You are only going to get it through this Bible by applying the laws of God. Now, let's move on to our next forefather now, okay? Give me that in uh, 2nd Ezra 3 verse 16. Our forefather Moses, okay? 2nd Ezra 3 verse 16. Second Ezra 3 verse 16. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. Right. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and and put by Esau. Come on. And so Jacob became a great multitude, and it came to pass that when thou ledest his seed out of Egypt. When thou did what? When thou ledest his seed out of Egypt. When thou ledest his seed out of Egypt. Come on. By who? By the hand of Moses. Come on. Thou broughtest them up to the Mount Sinai. Rain. And bowing the heavens, thou didst set past the earth, movest the whole world, and madest the depths to tremble. That's the waters. Rain. And, and troublest the men of that age. And troubled the men of that age. Because what they saw right here. It is like what? Whoa. You step, you step to the to, to the sea. You understand? The, the Red Sea. Guess what? The Red Sea just parts. And the people walk on dry ground. Who does that? 
The God of Israel does that thing. Can you imagine stepping next to the Indian Ocean and it just opens today? Imagine going to the Indian Ocean and step there and say, I need to pass here. Step aside. And it opens up and you pass. You're not going to need to tell that tale. <laughs> okay? You'll be experimented on. Understand that. Read that again. The book of 2nd Esther 3, verse 18. Come on. And bowing the heavens, thou didn't sit fast the earth. Read. Movest the whole world, and madest the devil to tremble, uh -huh. and thou troublest the men of that age. Who wouldn't be troubled of that? The Egyptians was troubled of that. Our forefathers were troubled by that thing when they saw it in Egypt. When we left, that's what they saw, and they were troubled. But that was not troubling enough because with the wilderness, we did some evil again. Sirach 45 and 1. Let's start from there. We never needed a mic anyway. Sirach 45 and 1. Read that. Ecclesiastes 45 is 1. Come on. And he brought out of him a merciful man, Read. which found favor in the sight of all flesh. This merciful man that found favor um, in all in the sight of all flesh. Read. Even Moses. That's Moses. Come on. Beloved of God. Beloved of God. And men. And men. Read. Whose memorial is blessed. Whose memorial is blessed. How was it blessed? Give me that in Exodus three verse one. Let's start there. Because let's see how meek Moses was. He was the meekest man that ever walked the earth. Okay? Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Let's start there. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Read. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Come on. The priest of Midian. Read. And he led the flock to the backside, to the backside of the desert. Come on. And came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Read. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. The bush was not consumed. Read. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. He is intrigued of what's going on. Come on. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. When the what? And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. Because what? Moses' attention was what? He was grabbed. The Lord got Moses' attention of what he was doing. Guess what? The same thing goes to us today. You go to the street. Somebody comes to the, to, to the street corner to come and learn. Guess who did that? The Lord did that. The Lord got that brother's attention. The Lord got that sister's attention because they were meant to hear the truth. Read. And the Lord, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, uh -huh. God called unto him. God out. did what? God called unto him. Today, hold on, today, the bush that burns with fire, guess who that is? Us at the seed corners. We are the bush that burns with fire. So when the people passing, they see us in their part, the way we dress, the way we're standing, that's a bush burning with fire. What's the fire? The laws of God that we're teaching. And the people turn aside to see. What is that? I've never seen this before. Read. The book of Exodus 3 was woke. Come on. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. Read. And said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Hear my read the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 5. Come on. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. What is he saying? Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Meaning don't come close except you do what? You put your shoe, you put your what your shoes from off thy foot. When the people come and learn, they need to let go of the garbage they've learned in the world. And they come with a what? With an open mind. So that the Lord can be able to what? To teach them. Read. For the place where one thou standest is holy ground. The place where one thou standest is holy ground. Give me Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1. Come on. Keep thou, 
Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Come on. And be more ready to hear. And be more ready to what? And be more ready to hear. And be more ready to listen. Read. Than to give the sacrifice of fools. Man, that to, the sacrifice of fools is what? Using coming with Christianity, coming with Islam to go against what is written in this Bible. That's a foolish sacrifice. Because you are sacrificing yourself for what? For something that has no value. Read. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of food. Come on. For they consider not that they do evil. They don't consider in their mind that what they are doing is evil. Come on. Be not rash with thy mouth. What did he say? Be not rash with thy mouth. Be not rash with thy mouth. Read. And let not thy heart be hasty. To utter anything before God. Do you see what it's saying? Read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Read that again, I'm sorry. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 2. Come on. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. He says, be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Meaning what? Keep your mouth shut when you come before the house of the Lord. Read. For God is in heaven. For God is in heaven. And thou upon earth. Read. Therefore, let thy words be few. Let thy words. Therefore, keep your mouth shut. That's what he's saying right there. Give me Job 6. Give me Job chapter 6, verse 24. Job chapter 6. Job 6, 24. Read that. The book of Job chapter 6, verse 24. Come on. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue. You see that thing? Teach me, and I will hold my tongue. I mean, I will keep my mouth shut. I will open my ears. Read. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue. Uh -huh. And cause me to understand wherein. I have heard. And cause me to understand wherein I have heard. Show me the sins that I'm in the midst of so I can repent. That's what he's saying right there. Read. Go back. Ecclesiastes again. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Be not rash with thy mouth. Come on. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Come on. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Uh -huh. Therefore, let thy words be few. Therefore, let thy words be few. Watch this. Give me the book of James now. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Read that. Give me James chapter 1 and verse... Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Verse 23. Read that. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 23. Uh -huh. For if any be a hearer of the word, if any be a what? If any be a hearer of the word, Read. and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Jump up to verse. Jump up to verse. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. wait. Hmm. Verse 19. I'm sorry. Verse 19. Read that. James chapter 1 verse 19. Uh -huh. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Read that again. The book of James chapter 1 verse 19. Read. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, uh -huh. let every man be swift to hear. Be what? Be swift to hear. Be swift to hear. Quick to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to speak, meaning therefore let thy words be few. Read. Slow to read. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes 5 and 2 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. He says, Lord, don't let your mind be hasty to utter anything before God. Read. For God is in heaven, uh -huh. and thou upon earth. Come on. Therefore, let thy words be few. Therefore, let your words be few. Go back now to Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. Read that again. Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. And he said, 
Go not nigh him. Uh -huh. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Read. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. You see what Moses is being told? He's being told, listen, you must patch out all the garbage that you've learned in Egypt, and now I must teach you again. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews 5 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5 and 12. Read. For when, the, for when for the time you ought to be teachers. For the time you ought to be teachers. Come on. Ye have need. Ye have what? Ye have need. Meaning it's necessary. Come on. That will teach you again. That you be taught again. Because why? We need to get rid of the garbage of the world. Read. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. The first principles of the oracles of God is to be taught. The right way according to the scriptures. Read. The first principles of the oracles of God are and are become such as have need as of a milk. What? And are become such as have need, need of milk. Need of milk. Need of milk. Come on. And not of strong meat. Let's go back. So what, what is going on here is what? Moses is being taught again. And Moses didn't back up. Remember, Moses was a prince in Egypt. Moses was a military general in Egypt. Moses was able to negotiate with different countries on how to deal. That means Moses was what? Very well educated in the customs of Egypt. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 22. Acts chapter 7, verse 22. Read that. The book of Acts, 7, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. He was learned in all the wisdom, not some of them, everything. Read. And was mighty in words and deeds. He was mighty in words and in deeds. You see that thing? So Moses, not only did he speak well, but Moses, he was a good military general in Egypt. You understand? He did the work. Exodus 3 verse 5. Again. Exodus 3 verse 5. Uh -huh. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, mm -hmm. for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Now watch this. Moses didn't back up. Moses, they say, he found grace in the sight of all flesh. So watch this. Give me Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11 verse 24. And Moses did it by what? By faith he did this thing. Okay? Faith in who? Christ. Because Moses understood. He understood Christ. Moses saw Christ. You understand? Read that. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24. Come on. By faith. By what? By faith. By faith. Come on. Moses, when he was come to years. When he was come to years. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Read. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. What did Moses do? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. He says, you know what? All these great riches that I got, all these status that I have, to hell with that. Because why? By faith, he understood that if I get rid of this, I'm going to get something much greater than what I'm looking at right now. Read. Then to enjoy the pleasures of sin for the, a season. The what? The pleasures of sin for a season. The pleasures of sin for a season. Sin is pleasurable, but it's seasonal. It's pleasurable, but it's seasonal. You understand? Read that part again. Choosing rather to what? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God uh -huh. than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Than what? Than to what? Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Read. Verse 26. Let's see why he did that thing. Read. Esteeming. And doing what? Esteeming. Esteeming. The reproach of Christ. The what? The reproach of Christ. The reproach of Christ. The suffering of Christ. Greater riches. Greater what? 
Greater riches. Greater riches with than the treasures than the treasures in Egypt. Than the treasures in Egypt. Than the riches of Egypt. Today is the riches of what? The riches of Europe. The riches of America. You understand? Read. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He did what? For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He had respect unto the reward that Christ is going to give him. Watch this. Next verse. By faith. By what? By faith. By faith. Come on. He forsook Egypt. He did what? He forsook Egypt. Where we at now? In slavery. New Egypt. He forsook Egypt. Come on. Not, not fearing the wrath of the king. Not doing what? Not fearing the wrath of the king. Not fearing the wrath of the king. That goes into the pharaohs. Come on. For he endured. He did what? He endured. No, he gave up. He endured. He endured. Read. As seeing him who is invisible. As doing what? As seeing him who is invisible. Remember, Moses was shown the glory of the Lord. That's what we're reading here. Watch this. How did Moses know that? Give me 2 Ezra 14 verse 1. 2 Ezra chapter 14 verse 1. 2 chapter 14 verse 1. Read. And it came to pass upon the third day. I sat under a oak, and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me, uh -huh. and said, Esdras, Esdras. Kind of the same thing that happened to Moses. Read. And I said, Here am I, Lord. And I stood up. Here am I. Here am I, Lord. Read that again, verse 2. Second Esdras, chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. And I said, Here am I, Lord. Read. And I stood up upon my feet. And I stood up upon my feet, meaning what? Stand like a man, he's saying. Read. Then said he unto me. Then said he unto me. Come on. In the bush. In the what? In the bush. In the bush. Come on. I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses. That's what we read in Exodus 3. Come on. And talked with him. Uh huh. When my people served in Egypt. So the Lord spoke with Moses. He talked with him. He communed with him. The same way he did with our forefather Abraham. Read. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt. Uh huh. Come and on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Verse 4 again. Second Ezra chapter 14 verse 4. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt. You see that thing? Power in submission. Moses was given the wisdom to do what? To go and face the oppressor to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. That is the same thing today with us. You understand? Read. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai. Come on. Where I, he where I held him by me a long season. That's 40 days and 40 nights. Come on. And told him many wondrous things. And did what? And told him many wondrous things. And told him many wondrous things. Come on. And showed him the, the secrets of the times. So the Lord showed Moses the secrets of the times. Come on. And the the secrets of the times and the end. And the what? And the end. He, Moses saw the end of time. He saw what? He saw the second coming of Christ. Moses saw that thing. You understand? That's why he was able to do what? To forsake Egypt. Because Moses was showed those things. Because why? Moses was obedient to the Lord. Moses didn't say, I don't want to do that, Lord. You know, look at, look at me. I am the prince in Egypt. Look at the riches I got. What you mean? Moses understood that, listen, it's not about me. It's about all of us. He understood that thing. So we all have to have the same mindset. Watch this. Give me... Hmm, let me see if I want to go there. Okay, no, go back to Exodus 3. No, no, go back to Hebrews 11, verse 27. Let's finish that verse. Hebrews of the 11 verse 27. Come on. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. As seeing him who is invisible. So Moses understood Christ. Moses understood about Christ. Moses saw the beginning of time. That's why he wrote Genesis. That's why he wrote the first five books. He understood that. But it wasn't just the books he saw. He saw everything else. He saw the beginning, he saw the end, he saw the middle of time. He saw us when we ruled during the dark ages. He saw all of that. You understand? He saw King Arthur. He saw Spartacus. 
He saw all those men. You understand? He saw Septimia Severus. He saw all those men. Guess what? He also saw America being destroyed. He saw America being wiped off from the face of the earth. He saw that thing. That's why he says, by faith, he decided, you know what? This is not worth it. So, what is that going into also? Your sin. You cannot be bound with your sin so much so that you get rid of the kingdom of the Lord that the Lord has promised you. It's already written. Your job is to what? Is to endure this walk. That's all it is. Your job is to endure. You can't say you cannot be uh, you cannot be hung up on your own as sin, yet you don't want to repent from it. And when the trial comes, you always fail the test. Why? That's because you're not studying. That's because you're not applying. The trial comes, you always fail the test. Why? Because you're not rooted and grounded in this Bible. That means you're distracted. Something is distracting you. What would that be? Anybody? Stand up. Answer the question. What would be the thing that would distract you? Why would you always be failing the test? What would be the reason behind it? The love of the world. Stand up and answer the question. The love of the world. Okay, make it plain. I make it plain. You see, I'm dumb. I'm slow. We're black. Pleasures of the flesh. The pleasures of the flesh, right? Okay, anybody want to add to that? Morning. That you are one with your sin. That's a good one. That's another good one. One with your sin. Who wants to expound on that? To men. Because I see spiritual hands are happening. Okay? It's, uh, it's uh, I'll agree with uh, the Prabhupada. Okay. Expound on it. What he said. The love of the flesh is like you are still hung up in the things of the world. You oh. still care about your sin. You are still thinking that it's all about yourself. Okay. You to please yourself. Give me some examples. I need some examples on this thing because he said the the flesh makes which is which is correct. He said one with your sin. Give me a, give me a for instance. Mm, for instance. Uh, Speak loud, brother. Yeah. You're a liar. Yes, I'm thinking an example. Okay. okay. Who 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 is an example? You're, okay, give me an example. Uh, Help the brother. <clears throat> to about brother Dumelo, with the cares of the world, uh, with um, the answer that brother Peggy gave, pleasures of the things in the world. Uh, for instance, you we don't know, we don't want to rebuke the LGBTQ or whatever because you're afraid that they might not employ you at your next job. Okay, interesting, interesting. All praises. But let's bring it on home, okay? Let's not be going outside, okay? Give me Sarah 18. I still think you are reading. Sarah 18 verse 30, read that. Let's see if you have something to add, you must bring it out, okay? Sarah 18 verse 30. I was about to quote that. <laughs> okay, read it. But that doesn't mean, I'm, I'm quoting it, but I'm using that as a, what I'm about to say. As long as you have something that you're going to say out on that, yes, you can stand up and answer the question. Come on. Ecclesiastes 18 verse 30. Read. Go not after thy lust, uh -huh. but refrain thyself from thy appetite. Okay, now, you're on. Give me some examples. E.g. As an example, what is what does that mean? E.g. Make it, make, make, make it plain for us. Plain. Let's say as a brother, you have a problem. You're struggling about big food and women. Mm. Okay, <laughs> let's just me. So... Obviously, that's something the last of your flesh. All right. You will be enticed by seeing them around. Okay. So as the scripture says, that don't give your, 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 your because that thing is harmful too. So correct. Don't give it. So do not bow down to that sin and sin. All praises. Makes sense. All praises. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for stuff like that. Okay. Don't be just giving me these vague answers. I want specifics. Okay. You're struggling with porn. Because that's the biggest thing in Israel, by the way. Inside and outside. Okay? Masturbating to the TV, to the computer, to your phone. Those are things that Israel is dealing with. Okay? Those are things we need to deal with. Alcohol, you're dealing with that. Anger, you're dealing with that. You understand? 
things of that nature. These are things we need to deal with in Israel. Okay, as an example. Let's go back. Um, Exodus 3 now, verse 5. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. Read. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, mm -hmm. put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Come on. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Read. Read that again. I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. This is a command. Moses is being commanded to do what? To repent. That's what the Lord is commanding Moses to do here. Repent of your sins so that I can deal with you. You understand? The Lord doesn't deal with anybody if you don't repent. Understand that? Watch this. Let's go back to Sirach 45 verse 2 now. Ecclesiastes 45 verse 2. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 45, verse 2. Read. He made him like the glory, like to the glorious saints. He says, He made Moses like to the glorious saints. Who's the saints? The 12 tribes of Israel. Read. And magnified him. And did what? And magnified him. Come on. So that his enemies stood in fear of him. You see that thing? So that his enemies stood in fear of him. Who were the enemies? The Egyptians. You understand? Read. By his words, he caused the wonders to cease. He did what? He caused the wonders to cease. Read. And he and he made him glorious in the sight of kings. He made him glorious in the sight of kings. Israel and the pharaohs. Read. And gave him a commandment for his people. He did what? And gave him a commandment for his people. He gave him a commandment for his people. That is what you are given today. A commandment for your people. Meaning what you are taught is for your people. Read. And showed him part of his glory. And showed him part of his glory. Give me Exodus 33. Exodus 33 and verse 23. Exodus chapter 33, verse 23. Read. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back paws. Thou shalt what? And thou shalt see my back paws. And thou shalt see my back paws. Come on. But my face shall not be seen. That's what he's saying there. Go back. Ecclesiastes chapter 45, verse 3. By his words, he caused the wonders to cease. And he made him glorious in the sight of kings. Come on. And gave him a commandment for his people and showed him part of his glory. Read. He sanctified him in the faithfulness and meekness. He did what? Verse 4 again. Ecclesiastes 45 verse 4. So verse 4 is the key. So pay attention to verse 4. Verse 4 again. The book of Ecclesiastes 45 verse, verse 4. Read. He sanctified him in his faithfulness uh -huh. and he you see that thing he sanctified Moses in his faithfulness Moses was faithful the Lord sanctified him and meekness Moses was obedient to the laws of God you understand read and meekness and chose him out of all men what did he do and chose him out of all men he chose Moses out of all men same thing that happened to him. no Adam, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. So the power that the Lord bestowed on Moses to part the seas, you understand? To turn the, 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 to, to turn the, the rod into a snake and all that. He did that, why? Because Moses was the meekest man on the earth. That's why the Most High glorified him before kings. That's why I did that. So the only way we are going to be glorified before kings, who's the kings now? We the kings. And Christ is the king of kings. So now, in order for you to be what? To get the kingdom? Guess what you must do? We have to submit to the power of the Lord. The power of the Lord is his commandments. 
we must humble down to what is written. There's power in submitting to this Bible and humbling down to this book. That's why it says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, the Lord says, then I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to wake you up and you're going to what? The things that are planned for you, you, don't, you cannot even imagine what I have for you. Okay? So by faith, we believe that thing based on everything that we just we read so far. Okay? Read. Verse 5. Verse 5. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 5. He made him to hear his voice. He did what? He made him to hear his voice. He made Moses to hear his voice. What is his voice? The commandments. Come on. Like when? Exodus 3. Moses, uh, the Lord spoke to Moses out of a burning bush. That's what we're reading here. Read. And brought him into the dark cloud. What did he do? And brought him into the dark cloud. Give me that in Psalms 104, verse 3. He brought him into the dark cloud. That's the reason why the top of Mount Zion was burning, was covered with a dark cloud. Okay? Psalms 104, verse 3. Read that. Psalms 104, verse 3. Uh, who laid the beams of his chambers he, into read. the waters. Come on. Who maketh the cloud his chariot. He did what? Who maketh the cloud his chariot. Who maketh the cloud his chariot. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. That's it right there. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay? The clouds is making reference to the chariots, which they call UFOs. Let's go back. Sarah chapter 45, verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 45, verse 5. Mm -hmm. He made him to hear his voice and brought him into the dark cloud and gave him commandments before his face. What did he do? And gave him commandments before his face. He gave Moses commandments before his face. Hmm. Read on. Even the law of life. Even and the what? Even the law of life. So the commandments is the law of life. Read. And knowledge. And knowledge, come on. That he might teach Jacob his covenant. That he may what? That he might teach Jacob his covenant. Because the covenant is the commandments that we just read. Read. And Israel his judgment. And Israel his judgment. Exodus 12 verse 25. Exodus chapter 12 verse 25. Exodus. You know what? Actually, give me Exodus 3 verse 6. Exodus 3 verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, Ray. and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Ray. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, mm -hmm. and have heard their cry. And have done what? And have heard their cry. The reason why today the Most High God is not dealing with our people the way He's supposed to is because our people are not crying to the Lord. They are crying to the government. They want the government to deliver them. They want politics to deliver them. They want white Jesus to deliver them. That's why the Lord is not hearing their cry. Read that again. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, chapter 1. Chapter 3, verse 7. Chapter 3, verse 7. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, mm -hmm. and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Come on. For I know their sorrows. For I know their sorrows. So we're supposed to cry to the Lord for him to deliver us. But our people must come into this truth, repent, and understand that they are the Israelites. Read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Come on. And to bring them up out of, the, of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. That's the promised land. Come on. Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Read. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. You see that thing? The Lord is seeing all of this, but He's also waiting for us to wake up and stand up. Read. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, uh -huh. 
that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Read verse 10 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 10. Come on. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You see that thing right there? Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You see the power that the Lord bestowed on Moses? He gave him the responsibility to go and deliver the 12 tribes of Israel from captivity. Because of what? The reason why we were delivered out of Egypt, what was the reason? Moses, through the Lord. Because of Moses' obedience, guess what? We were delivered out of Egypt. Because of Noah's obedience, we were delivered out of the flood. Because of Abraham's obedience, we get the promises, which is what? The kingdom. Power in submission. Read. Exodus 3 verse 10. No, no, verse, verse 11. Exodus 3 verse 11. Come on. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Come on. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. What did he say? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. Because what did he have? Power with God. That's why the Lord said what he said right there. Certainly I will be with thee. I'm going to be with you, Moses. Because he had power with God. He was the children of Jacob. Come on. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. That's Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb. Watch this. Give me Exodus 6 and 1. Exodus chapter 6 verse 1 now. Come on. Exodus chapter 6 verse 1. Read. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. Come on. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of this land. Because the most High God was going to bring forth judgments in Egypt. That is what's going on today, by the way. When you see the plagues, the coronavirus, before we were delivered out of Egypt, what happened? Plagues. Plagues. And guess what was going on? What was Moses doing? Teaching the people. What are we doing today? The same thing. We are teaching the people. So when you see these things happening in the earth, guess what is, what is going on? The Lord is getting ready to deliver his children. Understand that. So don't sleep. Don't fall out the truth. Read. And God spake unto Moses uh -huh. and said unto him, Come on. I am the Lord. I, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Jehovah meaning Yahweh. Read verse 3 again. The book of Exodus chapter 6 verse 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Read verse 4. And I have also established my covenant with them. I did what? And I have also... Stop right there. I have what? And I... Have also, I have also, I have also. You see that word right there? Very important word. I have also, meaning the same way I established a covenant with them, I'm establishing a covenant with you. I have also, read. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan. Come on. The land of their, their yeah. land of their pilgrimage, uh -huh. wherein they were strangers. Read. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. I have done what? And I have remembered my covenant. The covenant he made with our forefathers because of their obedience to the laws of God. They were faithful men. You understand? Read. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I am the what? I am the Lord. That's what we are teaching this day. The Lord said, as it is written, read. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. What did the Lord say? 
and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Because that's where we at now. New Egypt, new Pharaoh, new burdens. Read. And I will read you of and I will read you out of the abundance. Meaning what? I'm going to deliver you out of captivity. Come on. And I will redeem you. I will redeem. what? And I will redeem you. I will redeem you. Read. With a stretched out hand. With a stretched out arm. Uh -huh. And with great judgments. With what? And with great judgments. Listen. You know there's been many plagues on this earth. Never have we seen a plague where everybody has to be in their houses. They don't go nowhere. You understand? Companies shutting down their physical offices, work from home. Of the Ebola's that came out, the Zika virus, nothing like that was ever told to us. But today, this is what is told to us. You should read, the writing is on the wall. We are about to get delivered. You understand? Because right now, everybody's just walking around with their, with their, what? With their face mask on. Okay? Like robots and all that. The nations are planning evil because it says they are planning evil, like Joseph said. It says, mm, let's get it before I butcher it. Okay? <coughs> Genesis 50, real quick. Genesis chapter 50. Genesis 50, verse 19. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 50, verse 19. Uh -huh. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I for am I in the place of God? Come on. But as for you, as for you, ye thought evil against me. Because the nations have planned evil against us. That's why they released the Wuhan virus, the COVID-19. They thought evil to they thought to do evil against us. Really. But God meant it unto good. That's the reason why. Why is the Lord doing this? Because the most high God is getting ready to deliver his children. Understand that. Ray. To bring to pass as is as is, is this day to save much people alive. You see that thing right there? To save much people alive. So they thought to do mischief unto us, but the Lord allowed that thing to happen. Why? Because the Mosa is getting ready to do what? To deliver his children. That's why we're waking up this day. It's a strange thing that is going on with us. Think about it. When the people see us in the street corners shouting the Bible like we're crazy, screaming at people, it's a strange they've never seen this before. You understand? Women dress the way that they are, glorious as ever. It's a strange thing going on in the earth. And the people are watching and they're like, what the hell is going on here? Guess what? The Lord is getting ready to deliver his children. The Egyptians were like, listen, the thing that they trusted upon, because guess what? When the virus goes out, who are the people they call? The scientists. Those are the magicians. That's the magicians of Egypt. You understand? They trust upon the magicians. Guess what? In Egypt, the magicians could not stop the plagues. Today, can the scientists stop the plagues? No. They release the signal there's a vaccine. None of it is working. Okay? Guess what? What we're reading here is what? Is the repeat of the Exodus. You just have to open your eyes and see it. You understand? Read. Go back to where was that? Where was we at? Exodus chapter 6. Exodus 6. Read verse. Exodus 6. Uh, read verse 7 now. The book of Exodus chapter 6, verse 7. Uh -huh. And I will take you for to me for people. Uh -huh. And I will be to you a God. Read. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, Come on. which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Read. And I will bring you into, and I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham. Stop right there. Listen, because a lot of the times we read this, but you don't really think about it. So why does the Lord keep mentioning Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? What's the reason for this? The reason why he's, he's saying this is because the reason why we are going to get delivered is not because of us. <laughs> it's not because of we are so righteous. No, no. Mm -mm. It's because of our forefather Abraham did. The reason why Christ came was to bring all 12 together. For who? Making and fulfilling the oath that he made to who? Abraham. 
It's not because of nothing glorious. No, 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 no. It's because of what our forefathers did. That's why, hold on. Give me that in Proverbs. Let me show you. Let me show you something. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs real quick. Proverbs 13, I believe. Proverbs, I'm shooting from the hip. Let me write these things down. Okay. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. Uh -huh. A good man. A what? A good man. What makes a man to be good? The laws of God. Come on. Leave it an inheritance. Leave it a what? Leave it an inheritance uh -huh. to his children's children. Stop right there. To his what? To his children's children. To his children's children. That's why Abraham was given a covenant and said, listen, I'm going to make you a great nation. Kings will come out of thee, even to thy seed after thee, in their generations forever. He left an inheritance for that. Abraham was a good father. That's what a good father does. I hope you brothers and sisters can see this thing. Abraham was a great father. That's why it says Abraham was a great father of many nations. Who's the many nations? The 12 tribes of Israel. That's what a good father does. He doesn't think about himself. He thinks about the, th the second, the third, the fourth generation. He says, what I'm doing right now is not for me. It's for the children that are coming in the third or fourth generation. That's how we all must think. Because the more we learn and apply and teach our children and inspire the youngsters, guess what? They're going to be the ones that are going to push this truth forward when we are dead and gone. So you better think about them. Okay? Go back to Exodus 6. Exodus chapter 6 and verse, verse 8. One more again. The book of Exodus chapter 6 verse 8. Come on. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Right. And I will give it to you, and I will give it you for an heritage. I am the Lord. Come on. And Moses spake so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not. They did what? But they hearkened not. Isn't that what we're seeing today at camp? When we go to the streets, black men being gay and effeminate, hating this Bible, because he led to give his bum to a man. Is that what that's what it is? Okay? Good warrior. You see that thing? Please, Johnson. <laughs> I'm sorry, brothers. <laughs> oh, boy. Hold on. Give me Exodus. Um, give me Exodus 6, 26. Jump down to verse 26. The book of Exodus 6, verse 26. Read. These are that Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel. Bring, do what? Bring out the children of Israel. Bring out the children of Israel. Come on. From the land of Egypt, uh -huh. according to their armies. That's what you're looking at right now, sisters. That's the army of the Most High God right there. Who's the king? Christ. Who's the king? Christ. What color is it? Black. See right there. That's the army of the Most High God right there. Read again. The book of Exodus, chapter six, verse twenty-six. Verse twenty-six. Come on. These are the Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, "Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, according to their armies." That's what you are seeing right now. The Most High God assembling his army. You see that thing? Oh, praise to the Most High God for that thing. Hmm. Give me Exodus 12, verse 25. I'm almost done. Exodus 12, verse 25. Read. And it, and it shall come to pass, when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he has promised. According to as he has what? According to as he has promised. Who did he promise this to? Abraham. Read. That ye shall keep the service. Ye shall keep the service. Going into the Passover. Come on. And it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. When your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? When your children ask you, Why do you celebrate the Passover? This is what you must tell them. Read. That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. It is the what? It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, come on. Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel, of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians. When he did what? When he smote the Egyptians. Now think about it now. We were commanded to what? 
to put what blood on the door on the doorposts. You know what that blood represents? Being covered. You understand? That blood represents the blood of Christ. You understand? That blood represents the blood of Christ. Because when Christ came during the time of the Romans, what did he do? He laid his life down for the 12 tribes of Israel. So when the Lord passed over the houses, he didn't kill anybody where the, what, the door holes had, what, what, had blood on it. Guess what? Right now, the blood of Christ is what covers us now. When judgment comes, it will pass over us. That's the spiritual understanding of that thing. Read it again. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 27. Come on. Then he shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. Read. Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians. When he did what? When he smote the Egyptians. So right now, our covering is the what? The commandments in the spirit of Christ, in the faith of Christ. We keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. What Christ did for us, we keep his laws because we believe in what he did for us and what he's coming to do. So when, when judgment comes, we will be covered by them. Guess what's going to happen to our enemies? They are going to be destroyed just like Egypt was. Read. When he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. When he did what? And delivered our houses. This is the house of Israel right here. Read. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. What did they do? And the people bowed the head and worshipped. Come on, they agreed to this thing. Read. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. You see that thing right there? That's a beautiful thing right there. Read again verse 28. Exodus 12 to 8. Come on. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. You see that thing? So those that, that means, that means there's no such things that I'm an individual light. That's not in the Bible. Because they did what they did as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. Guess what? If you hate the leadership, I'm telling you straight. The reason why I'm pretty keep, why, why do you think I keep bringing this up? I'm going to see who's thinking. Where are we now? We spiritually, where are we at? Hold on, wait, what? No, 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 no. Where are we at now? Currently, spiritual. I gave you the answer already. Spiritual Egypt and what? Thank you. Let's go to the book of Jude. I'm going to show you something. Because when we think of Sodom, what comes to the mind? No, 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 no. Stand up, answer the question. I see spiritual hands are up. Exactly. Spiritual Egypt, when we think of Sodom and Gomorrah, what is the thing that comes to mind, generally, usually? Uh, I think about the judgment, fire and brimstone. Okay, but why? Because of the wickedness that was happening in the area. What was the wickedness? It was uh, men killing with men. Okay. Anything else? Energy. Stand up, stand up, stand up. What the hell is this? <laughs> Uh, it was the spirit of his LGBTQR. Okay, like in Ganja is saying. Yes, sir. Okay, anybody want to add, sir, add, add to that? Okay. Now, let's go to the book of Jude. Let me show you the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? Jude, Jude verse 7. Watch this. Jude verse 7. The book of Jude verse 7. Uh -huh. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. And the cities about them in like manner, uh -huh. giving themselves over to fornication. That's what you was mentioning. And going after strange flesh. That's what you was mentioning. And sets forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Not verse. Come on. Likewise, also the these filthy dreamers. These filthy dreamers. Come on. Defile the flesh. Defile the flesh with fornication, giving themselves over unto strange flesh. Come on. Despise dominion. That's it right there. You see that thing right there? So, the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah of homosexuality, yeah, that was one characteristic. Okay? The next characteristic, read that part again. Despise dominion. Despise the leadership. You see that thing? It wasn't just uh, homosexuals bumping and grinding. No. It was the hatred of leadership. What does that mean? What does that leadership do? They give you command. 
according to what is written. If you run a command, guess where you, which category you fall in? Mm -hmm. You see that thing? So if you hate correction, it's not just for the men. The sisters too, you hate correction, you're going to be you're gonna reserved for that eternal fire. That's the vengeance. So if you don't like to be told what to do, you're part of that Sodom and Gomorrah group. It wasn't just homosexuality. No. So you can imagine, now that you understand the next characteristics, where are we now again? Spiritual Sodom. Spiritual Sodom, Spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah. Because today, do the men and women, do they love order? No. The Bible is a true book. Read that again. The book of Jude, verse 8. Likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise the meaning, and speak evil of dignity. They speak evil of the leadership. The reason why I keep bringing this up is because Israel, that thing is like a default setting. You ever bought a TV? It's like a default setting. Okay, factory default. You work with machines. You know it comes with factory settings. Uh -huh. And then when the machine is not correct, they say no reset <laughs> to factory settings. Gossip and murmuring and speaking evil of the leader. That's like Israel's default setting. And that's why the Most High God brought death that was never seen before. The earth opened, swallowed the earth closed. So that there's no evidence of that thing happening. Because that thing had to happen. It was not a common type of death. It had to be strange. So you know the Lord is part of this thing. Now, give me, where was we at? Exodus chapter 12. Okay, let's go back. What verse? 28. Read it again. The book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 28. Come on. And the children of Israel went away. And did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. Come on. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. The most high is a guy, he don't play, really. And all the firstborn of the captive. Meaning what? The firstborn of everything was dead. Because a lot of the times you only think of the people. No, no. The cattle, the sheep, the goat, firstborn, they were all dead. So imagine if you are the firstborn in your family, you are eight years old, you're going to die. That's what happened because you just think of no, the chip. No, 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 no. If you are the firstborn, even if you are 70, 60, 80 years old, you are the firstborn, you got the judgment. Really? And Pharaoh rose up in the night, and he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. There was a what? And there was a great cry in Egypt. You have to imagine this thing. That's why I said, you brothers, you must put yourself in this Bible. Okay? Imagine the whole of Midrand. Everybody wakes up in the morning, their firstborn is dead. What do you think gonna happen? What type of cry are you gonna hear? The whole of Jobek. Firstborn's been slaughtered. They wake up in the morning, the firstborns are all dead. The whole of Jobek, as you as big as it is. Can you imagine that the cry? People was weeping in Egypt. You understand? So what we're reading right here, that's what I'm saying. You need to imagine what you are reading. Okay? Read. And there was a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house where there was not one day. That's how the Most High God deals. You deal with Israel, if you deal with the children of Israel in a crazy way, like the nations are doing to us, guess what's going to happen? The Most High God will, he will come down. The earth will shake, okay? And people are going to see the, really what the Lord is capable of doing. Because they are provoking him. Every day they are provoking the Lord. When they mistreat us, they ill treat us. The Lord is watching it. He said, okay, it's not time yet. Okay? The 144,000 are not sealed yet. Let me wait. Once that last number is sealed, guess what? It's time to go home. Okay? And it's going to happen at noon day. Everybody's going to see that thing on that day. I pray that we're at camp on that day. That will be a glorious day. You know that you are sealed. 
You look at your final week. I hope it happens when we're at camp. Okay? It better happen when we're at camp. When we're bringing it out, some Negro acting the crazy. <laughs> and the Lord said, you see some, something just, boom, you see everything now. Because you're going to see them. And I said something there. You're going to see the stuff. Right now, you don't, we are not at that level we can see stuff yet. We are not there yet. When it's time, the Lord is going to say, okay, Lord, open their eyes so they can see the stuff. Okay? Um, read on. We're going to read up to verse 33. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord, as ye have said. Jump down to verse 35. Verse 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and rain. Imagine, there's a great cry in Egypt. The Lord says, rob them. Take everything they got. Take their earrings, take their gold, their garments, everything beautiful that they came from you have, take everything. So when we left Egypt, we were not looking like ragamuffins. We were looking glorious as ever. You understand? The best linen, okay, the best cotton. That's how we was dressed. We were not wearing big togas. Okay? Ray. And the Lord gave the people favor. He did what? And the Lord gave the people favor Come on. in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such as such things as they required. Read. And they spoiled the Egyptians. They did what? And they spoiled the Egyptians. Jump down to verse 40, verse 40 now. Exodus chapter 12, verse 40. Now, the sojourning of Actually, you know what? Read verse 37. Because verse 37 is going to coincide with Exodus 6, 26. Read. Exodus 12, verse 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. Who are these men? The army. This is the army right here. 600,000. This is just the men. We're not counting the women and the children. The men. 600,000 men on foot. And you better, you, you, you better ask yourself, how long, let me see if I brought that book. Did I bring that book? Mm, I didn't bring that book. How we were sitting, how we was in formation, in order. Beautiful thing to behold. Okay? Verse 40 now. Exodus 12 verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Was 430 years. So the Lord delivered us out of the land of Egypt. So you see the power in submission? Because of Moses' obedience and Aaron, guess what? The people was delivered. So next time when you, when, when command is given out, you better think about this thing. Which means, which means if you are thinking, I want you men to think now. Which means, if you don't want to follow correction, what does that mean? Who's thinking? Stand up and answer the question. Gandhi. Uh, so I think uh, if you don't want to follow command, you just don't want to be in No, 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 no. Let's deal with, um, we're dealing with deliverance now. Okay? But deliverance is about the people now. Okay? Give it in the context of uh, the people. You hate it. Uh, that's it right there. You despise your people. You hate your brothers. Because had Moses refused, can you imagine that? You really think about, you have to imagine that thing. Moses refused to do the work. He said, no, I don't want to do it. Obviously, the Lord, the Lord was going to raise somebody else. But the point is, that was not going to look good. Look at something that Moses did when he says, shall we, shall I take water out of the rock? The Moses was mad as hell. And he kept, Moses kept mentioning that thing over and over, if you read the books. He kept mentioning because listen, that thing was bothering him. Because Israel will wear you out. Yeah? Israel, Negroes, Negroes will test you. Okay? They'll push your buttons. Because they think, oh, yeah, he's not going to punch my face. 
Okay? Because if you do it, they say, oh, brother, you see, you're in the, you're in the spirit. You are wrong. You see, why, why did you punch his face? They will test you, they will poke you. And that's what they were doing to Moses. 40 days and 40 nights, Moses was fasting. When he came back, guess what they did? They created a new golden calf and they were dancing these demonic dances that we see today on YouTube and Instagram. Women naked, or not, listen, all of them. Moses was mad, he took the, the stones, he cracked them. And he did another 40 days. For who? For the 12 tribes. So you really need to think how heavy Moses was. He was a heavy man. 40 days. Who else did 40 days? Who's thinking? Uh huh. So think about that thing. That's heavy right there. That's some heavy stuff. Ah, that is some heavy stuff. We don't touch stuff like that. Okay? Nehemiah 9.27. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 27. Mark. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of the enemies mm -hmm. who vexed them. And in the time of their trouble, when they came, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saved. Thou did what? Thou gavest them saved. Uh -huh. Who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. You see that thing? So Adam. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, saviors. And guess what? You, you brothers, saviors. You are the saviors now. Okay? We are walking after the footsteps of the saviors that came before us. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. Because all of them, they were moving in the spirit of Christ. I'm going to close it right here. Give me that in uh, Peter. Second Peter 1. Let me see. First Peter 1. First Peter chapter 1 verse 10. First Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Come on. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Our forefather Abraham, he prophesied about Christ. Read. Searching what? Or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them. The what? The Spirit of Christ which was in them. The Spirit of Christ which was in them. Read. Did signify uh -huh. when it testified beforehand. Before what? Beforehand. Beforehand. Meaning all the prophets that were prophesying in the Spirit of Christ. From Genesis with Adam up to now. In the Spirit of Christ. Read. Which testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. The glory of the kingdom that will follow. So our forefathers, all of them, they spoke about Christ. You just have to see the subtleties of the scriptures to pick those things up. But they are in them. The only way to know those things you have to read. Blessed be he that read them. Not blessed be he that listen to his videos. No, no. Bless me, he that read it. You better sit down and read this book. Don't be window shopping on YouTube. Because some of you are window shopping. I can speak by the conversation. Stop window shopping. Read your Bible. Okay, brothers and sisters, let's break bread. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 23. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthy, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. 
In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.